Okay, you may all be seated. Thank you. <coughs> all right, Mr. Grinke, you can continue with your direct exam. <coughs> Money problems. Absolutely zero money problems. Uh, the money problems we have is we just close on this house. Somebody having a significant other, anything like that? Who? Like a, a boyfriend, girlfriend? Oh gosh, no. Like We're not gonna find anything, any of that. No, no, nope. 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 You come up all you want. We're not gonna find any financial issues that you told us. You said you're pretty much good. There's no financial issues that you guys have right now at all. Nope. Everything's paid up to well, it should just, be. There's no, there's no lull in any of the. Um, accounts, the bills that you have right now, they're not falling behind in the rears by any way, shape, or form. The only thing I have is, that, like I told you, them, I have two credit cards from the house I built. You have life insurance, but there's no life insurance on Barb? I think there's a little policy. When was that? I, I have to, I have to, a while ago? Yeah, oh yeah, it's been a long time. Long time. We, we, we set it up that, because I was a money man, and if anything would happen to me, she wouldn't be able to make it to live on her own. Mm -hmm. So I set it up with me a big, two big policies. Okay. And I don't know, I think we had a little one or something on her, just because the lady said you should have something on her. But we didn't have much at all on her. Okay. Just because of the fact that I was the one that, if something happened to me, I wanted to make sure she was taken care of. And you said you had two credit cards? Those are all? Yeah. Those are all up to date. No. Nothing, nothing in the rears there. No, there is. There's two of them that are from that house. Um, How much is owed? Uh, it's only like four or five thousand on one and three thousand on the other. I think. And that was all from buying supplies for the house that you flipped. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you sold the house. We just sold it. We just closed on here. We just finally got um, everything mm -hmm. taken care of and switched over. Okay. Is this the one you built? Yeah. Okay. So then you. you what was the, the four or five thousand dollar credit card bill for? But you, you said that's for working on the house. I, I put stuff on there so we can get the, the points for the reward points. Yes, okay, so you didn't take out a loan? Yeah, we went over the loan. You went over the loan. We had to do some stuff extra on the what house. What was the loan for? How much did you take the loan off for? Um, three, three hundred, two ninety. I think it was two ninety. She took a loan for two hundred ninety thousand. Okay. I think that's what it was. I'm not exactly sure what what it exactly was. How much did it cost you to build it? Uh, I don't remember. Two. It was right around two ninety something like that. Two eighty, two ninety. Cost you two ninety to we, build three hundred thousand. We we, we don't, Let me tell you this. When we when we build a house. We, we do it as a hobby together, and we don't do it to get rich off it. We make it look like this one I bought a camper with. We bought the camper right when we started the house. You used the money from the loan to buy the camper? Yeah, part of, just, just a part of it. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we do is we try to find something or we put it on the house. Our goal is to get the house paid off. Okay. Um, How much was your camper? 6500 why don't you put that on your credit card just to get the points? Because it's a recreational thing. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have paid it off. You can't buy a camp with a credit card. It was a private party. You can take out okay. So, it, we, we, I mean, we just, that's how we did it. That's how we always did it. Um, um, that's how we always did it. So, you took out a loan for three? I can't, we sold the house for 309. Okay. And you, you took the loan out for what? Um, How long did it take you to build this house? Well, this one took a while because we were going to maybe move into it. What's a while? Said nine months. Okay. So nine months we took out a loan f from the bank for? Um, I can't remember if it was two, 280 or two. I can't remember exactly what it was. I, I just, I can't remember what it exactly was. Okay. So you don't know what you call the property? <laughs> no. Because we put the, we buried the camper into it. We tried to base it, okay, we want to do this with this or this with you, this. When did you close on the house? A um, couple, three weeks ago. Okay, 
So everything's done separately. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know how much you made? Well, um, minus sixty five hundred. We didn't. We didn't make much. I mean, um, we probably only made. It, we're on the size at this point. I don't. I don't remember. I just want to make sure everything's. Your, your bills and finances are all. We've order. never had a problem with bills. I, I lost my job. How far back? Your credit cards are in the rears. How far back are they in the rears? So I got the money in the bank to put them off now. I understand that. Um, how far in the rears are they now? What, what do you mean? How far behind? Yeah. Um, maybe a payment. You just one. Yeah, they're not. They're not way back. Okay. No. And and if you look at the, the history on them too, um, it's it's they're always like that with those two. Um, Collection agency hasn't called you. Uh -uh. Nothing for real. anything. No. No bankruptcies. No. Uh -uh. We've never. I lost my job back in. Oh boy, that was in the nineties. And. Um, even after that, I still picked up and I still picked up and got, you know, kept all the bills paid and, 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 and made go with, I had two other people that hired me on right away, so it wasn't a, um, it didn't affect us much at all. How much are you in debt right now? How many, how much in unpaid bills would you estimate you have right now? With everything? Yeah. I have... Maybe 150000 Okay, that's included in the house. And that, so. Who paid those bills? You or Barb? Barb. So she pretty much took care of the finances? Yeah. Okay. If we were going to be short or something, she would call and say, you know, we got to do this, we got to do that. Was there any arguments about her spending or your spending? Mm -mm. She bought, she knew what the finances were, and if she needed to buy something or wanted to buy something, um, we, you know, she'd say, I'm, like her hair, every so many weeks she went and got her hair done, and she'd always say, I'm getting my hair done this week, so, you know, she checks in me a bigger check, by it's not, take a day of overtime, and we didn't like to, um, run short each week, we, we tried to go off what we, each check if we could, because some weeks I get a smaller check, and then every other, every other month I get a three-day paycheck. Okay. Cause of how my schedule works, I'm on four, off four, so every other month I get a three-day paycheck. So, and but now I just got, I just got promoted at work. So every other week you get three-day pay or every month. Other month. Every month. Did I say a week. Sorry. I don't know if you said. I'm not sure said that or not. So, are, there, so, are, there day, are there weeks that you get the five-day paycheck then? No. It's three and four. So, and I just got, it maybe I don't know. Six months ago, I got finally progressed into my job mm -hmm. to where now I can get, um, I'm making the big money. Oh, yeah. So, and she was pretty happy. She's paying down on the house and everything else. So, um, everything was going good so that way. And you haven't come in into any money? Mm -mm. Here it says no. Or like that. Nope. Nope. We keep telling, well, she kept telling her mom to disperse some of her money just to like her and, and her brother mm -hmm. so that if she needed it come down the line, she'd have it longer than trying to hold it there. Okay. So, but she, her mom's from the old school. She don't want to, she can't, I mean. It won't change nothing or do nothing. You don't know how those scratches got on your body? No. I don't know. I I I don't know. I don't know. Um I don't know. In Madison they took samples from underneath Barb's fingernails. Okay. So you know that. Okay. And those are 
Okay. And that's that's perfectly fine. And if those come back and it's just that those are skin samples from you. How is that gonna be explained? Um I I I That's so that's what they're gonna kind of come back as. And and um I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you tell me this stuff now, and then I try to come up with a scenario, and it's going to sound like I'm just pulling straws out. I don't. I don't. I don't. An incident that happened. And, and I want to solve this as well as you do. You can. I, and I'm you telling can, you. You can solve this for us. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I do not know how everything happened, but I can tell you I did not. What is going to happen when those? Those samples from underneath her fingernails <laughs> come back, and it's your skin samples. Tell me that. Could it? Could and 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 I, I don't know. Okay. You got scratches here. You show the pictures. You got I see them. You got scratch across your chest. That's gonna scratch across that with the fingernails. Gonna take countless numbers of skin samples, skin cells. These across here got countless numbers of skin, skin cells. They're, they're linear in nature. They're not like something in the best. How could that be through my shirt? Could it? You didn't have your shirt on when I went over. Oh, come on, serious? I don't know. Man, I'm, I'm getting a little bit nervous here. I'm now. telling you, well, look at that. That's should I, should I, should I be, should I have somebody in here to help me? Or I'm just asking how, how. Just ask me this. Should I have somebody in here to help me? That's for you to decide. I don't think I need anybody. But, then, but, then, then it's your decision. I'm just, I'm, I want, expl trying to get explanations on this. And, and, that's and, the injury that occurred that you have no explanation for. Exactly. And put it all together. You've got to put, look at our, our I know, look I understand. The totality of everything that we have. We yes. are uncovering this, yes. and there's so much far-fetched, right. there's things that are not, yep. can't happen here. It didn't happen like that. Yep. It didn't, all these things were putting together. We don't have an explanation for that. And, and, and. We, we've got, a, we've got samples, we're going to have skin samples underneath Barbara's nails. I'm, I'd be willing to bet that you. And, and could it be. When, because when, she gave you a hug? No, 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 no. Come on, guys, let's be real, okay? I'm That's not right if we're talking about I don't know. I, I want to, we want well, to, I mean, we want the truth. I'm trying to give you the truth. I'm giving you everything I can tell you. I wish I could tell you. I, I'm, I'm telling you. So we're going to have skin samples underneath her nails. Okay. Be willing to bet that. Okay. And could it be when I, when I lunged over to her side of the car? Could it be, I'm, 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 I'm just asking, could it be from then? Because yeah, I don't I'm remember. Tell me how that happened. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I lunged down to the, I was, I was, I don't know. Lunging, lunging across is, is how is that? Could she have reached out for me? Could she have reached out for me? And so you're saying that she would have reached out and scratched you in the neck? I, I don't know. That's what I'm not saying. Okay. I'm just asking you, could that be a possibility of what, of what that would, would be? Because I told you I didn't have them going into the accident. I told you that. Okay. Not lying there. I didn't. I did. I did not have those uh, going into the accident. I told you that. I'm trying to figure out how I could have got them. Is what I'm trying to figure out. What what scenario could have got me them? Could she? And, and I don't. You're grasping at straws. I'm not. And that's what I told you. And tell me I was doing it. You are. Come on, buddy. Let's uh, be realistic here. We're I'm trying to be realistic with you. And I told you that's what you were going to say, and that's why I'm not going to say I, 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 I can't. I, I mean, I, I, you're trying to, uh, when this happened, did this happen? Well, yeah. I, okay. Well, so the same questions that everybody else could be wanting answers for. I understand that. So who, 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 who do I have to help me to, rep, to I mean, I, I don't want We're here to help you. I understand that. But I, I just told you that. It, I was giving you a scenario as to what maybe could have happened. And I was telling you that I don't want you to say that, and then you come and say, oh, that's, that's, what, that's what you were. And you know that, too. I'm trying to make this scene go together as well as you guys are. 
How about the fact when you had your, your hands around her neck that she was grasping and scratching your neck? She scratched your chest when, you're, when you had that argument at home well, before you got in the car. We did. When you were in the car. We did not. Have, I did not put my hands. Am I grasping at straws now, or does that sound more like it could be a more probable explanation? No, it doesn't. No? No. Mm -hmm. She had three deep cuts in the back of her head and a broken skull in the back there. Shattered skull. Way. From 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 where? From how? From impact from the back. From 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 what 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 I don't get it. From somebody hitting her with an object, slamming her head against the garage floor. Well, we'll see what that comes back at. I'm just trying to help you explain it. I understand. We want, we want the answers as much as as you have them. I understand that. like this, tell us the mechanism of injury. So we tell them the mechanism of injury, as okay. you've told us the mechanism of injury happened. They go and they do everything. They did, and they, they said there's absolutely not, did not happen. No way it could have happened. There's too many planes of injury that it occurred on. This was something that was much different than that explanation. She didn't bang her head anywhere or anything like that. No. There is injuries to the back of her head. There are injuries to the front of her head, the side of her head. Injuries to her neck. Those are all things that could not have happened with a pipe coming through the windshield. And that pipe going through the windshield would have kept right on going through the windshield and through the back of the car and would have been sticking out of the window. So I got a pipe, I told you I saw the video of the pipe that came through sideways at 35 miles per hour coming onto an on-ramp that went completely through, sideways through a windshield. Hmm. This is a 53-inch pipe that weighs, I don't know exactly what the weight is, but it's not light by any means. You're saying you can't remember pulling it out of the... Windshield. I don't think somebody could have pulled it out of a windshield with one hand. I think when you're in adrenaline, it's going, I think you can do a lot of stuff. That is true. That's very true. But she's already leaned forward out of the car, coming out of the car, so the pipe's really not in the way, according to... You can't remember exactly where it is, but if she's already falling out of the car, the pipe's not really impeding her to get her out of the car. Because when the door opened the door, she was coming towards you. So that pipe's, according to you, that when she's falling out the door, is really not a factor in being in the way. The door is coming closed because you're sitting at an angle. That makes sense. But you're standing there. That doesn't make much sense. I have to go through the glass and hit her once in the head and not even have this conversation. So, so, when will they be done with that at my house? I don't know. I just want... We've been uh, talking to you, so we don't have that. What's that? I said we've been talking to you, so we don't have that. can't tell you what they got to do or what they have left or whatever else we have, but we want to try to explain the, the multiple of injuries that, that occurred at Barbara, and we're not at that stage yet. We're still, and the only person that's going to be able to tell us that is going to be you. And I'm firmly convinced that, well, I know that the, the injuries, all those injuries didn't happen as you said, though, and you know that, too. She didn't you're, have much left the house. You know that, too. She didn't have much left the house. 
what point did she get them? You can't do that. It had to be there. It wasn't there. You know that. It can't happen. What? It can't happen. I can understand that. We can see it can't happen. But These doctors are very, very good. The doctor in Madison is a fantastic forensic pathologist. There's no way those injuries are caused as your explanation. It didn't happen in the house. It happened, they happened someplace other than at, at a pipe hitting her in the head. They happened someplace else. The, cross, the, the, the broken bone in the, in the throat. There's marks and bruising around her neck. How do you explain that? There's bruising that goes from here and here. And there's all kinds of petechia I, right I, in here. I, I told you, how, I didn't yeah. know how I got her out of the car. Yeah, and that's, I, I, I don't that's know. not, if you grabbed her, by that's not gonna, that's not gonna be enough force to do it. It's gonna take a force that's, it's gonna take an extended force to cause the petechia around the, uh, around the injury there. To break the bone in the throat, it's gonna take a steady force. It wasn't by you pulling her out of the car and not nicely or however you put it. That's not, there's, it doesn't, it's not consistent. We know it's not consistent with this, what you're telling us. It's not. I think you can see that it's not. There's no possible way that all those injuries in those different planes of her body, different planes of her upper body, could have occurred by that one. You can't, I mean, explain three large gashes in the back of her head with a crack skull. Or a pipe coming through the windshield. Nope. It didn't happen. A uh, broken nose. If it would have been the pipe hit her in the nose, there would have been, it would have cut her nose. Or cut, her nose isn't cut, it's broken. The bruising through her lips, like they're pressed onto her teeth some way, either with a punch or another way. And multiple ways that that can happen. No, not, no, not going to happen. Not going to happen with the mug. Not, not with that. Because it's consistent around. It's not. The cut on her forehead. You know, it's not how it happened. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm not going to tell you. I, I can't tell you again. You can tell me. I'm, I'm telling you guys what I know. We're not telling okay. us the whole truth. I'm telling you all the truth. We, else we need you to tell us the truth. I understand tell that. Us, tell us what happened. Tell us how this occurred. I, I told you what I can tell you. I, 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 I mean, done. let's wait for them to come back and see what they I, find. I don't think you told us what you... Let's, let's let them come back. You're going to see that they're not going to find anything. You have a lot of reasons for, for sticking to your story. I understand that. But, but, I, but, but, but tell me what reason I would have to do this to my wife. That's what I don't understand. Something it, popped up. At there's nothing that something popped up. She, the, there's something, there's all kinds. The story that we, when we deal with these kind of things, there's all kinds of things that we see that become problems between a married couple. You know what they are. There's all kinds of things. And, 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 and to and get through to all the different things that we're going through, that we're going to find things, if we're going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to go through everything. Yep. Phones, computers, everything we'll we can. Do everything, her phone. Uh, photographs, talk to her friends, talk to your friends, yeah. talk to, and that's, you know, like you said, we got great friends, you got all yeah. kinds of, and you can, anything. And I, I encourage you guys to go through all We're going to do everything. I understand that, and I'm not going to hide one thing from you guys. Mm -hmm. if, if you, if there's anything that, um, I think, in, in my opinion, that you're hiding one thing, and that's how all these injuries happen. No. The story doesn't add up, and you know it doesn't add up. I know it doesn't add up. You know it doesn't add up, right? And, and, and there are some things that I can't explain. You know, you know that this story about the pipe going through the windshield doesn't add up. I'm, I'm, it, I'm not, that is what happened to my wife. You know that all those in your case, the pipe went through, but you know that that didn't I did not do them to my wife. Tell me, tell me how, tell me, give me something to I was with my you. wife that whole morning. I got up with her at 6.30. I believe you were. And That's I did. Kind of, I believe you were. And and you did not time. do any of that to my wife. How did the, all these injuries occur? All right. It didn't happen this way. Those doctors are incredible at what they do, and they know it didn't happen with the pipe. Something, something happened, Todd. We gotta get 
through that barrier and explain how some of these things happened prior to whether it was prior to leaving the house or in the car or when you know you said didn't happen at the house okay well it happened someplace and it didn't happen it didn't happen right there or there that is not where that occurred it occurred someplace else you tell us where that was because it's not that you know it you're, you're certain that it didn't you know for a fact that that did not happen by a pipe coming through the window you know that you're agreeing with me you're shaking your head I'm agreeing with yep. you that I've told you everything and it that I happen. know it and I did not it and I did happen. not do anything to happen. hurt my wife at all how did the injuries occur I have no idea you do it, it it's I, I did something happen accidentally no something in it this right here what is what this what, accident what is this? the accident happened Nothing, there's absolutely nothing self-inflicted or absolutely not. not you can, nothing that you did that you didn't really intend to do. No, absolutely not. I would not, never, I've, I've um, and, 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 I mean, why would you, why would you want a main road? Do you know what terminal velocity is? No. Terminal velocity is the rate at which things fall. Mass times drag times gravity. So if I have this, no. and it's sitting here, and it drops, that was the terminal velocity. You can calculate that. So a pipe weighing what it was with very little drag because it's aerodynamic so it's not dragged to it it's being affected by gravity at a certain rate so you get mass and you can determine that so if you're talking even if you're talking it's raised up from the flatbed of a truck and it comes off rolls off comes off it's gonna the rate of that speed is Accelerated as gravity hits it, and it accelerates as it goes to the ground. So you're saying it's a flatbed truck. Don't know how high it is. It's going to roll off, and it's going to roll off the truck here, and it's going to go. It's not going to roll off and go that way. When it's going to roll off and go. coming by that pipe in your explanation then rolls off flies to the side goes all the way to the opposite side of your vehicle and goes through the windshield and that's with the laws of physics is impossible I can show you right here nothing's impossible anymore where this accident right here that we're dealing with I'm saying that the accident that that that, that pipe as it rolls off is going to roll and drop straight down it's not going to continue on going that way it's a flat road <coughs> so the theory of one, that we know that the injuries weren't caused, all those injuries weren't caused by a pipe coming through. Let me take that off the board. The fact that the laws of physics prevent that pipe from flying across your car because of the terminal velocity is such a thing that can't, it can't happen. So that's two in that. Can we, have they ever, have, I mean, can we, can we do that? Can we put a piece of pipe on it? We've, we've, we've already realized that there's no bump in the road. You know, the terminal velocity, the velocity of that going down a road is not going to cause, right. it's not going to cause. 
It wouldn't have necessarily been a bump. It's not going to, if it rolled off or bumped, there's no bump. If it rolled off, the terminal, it's, gonna, it's not going to sail. The, the drag with a, a pipe that heavy, there's not going to be much drag. It's a circular pipe. Okay? It's not going to sail. It's not going to, you know, it's like people, people think that they can jump. It's people that think they're going to jump from uh, like a third story level and they can make it to the pool. Well, they don't realize that that's, so they're going to jump and they realize, oh, that's 25 feet, but I should be able to fly as an angle. That's not how, that's how college kids die at spring break because they jump and they go up and they stop and they go down with force. This is rolling. There's not any force, not any, I mean, even take a little bit of speed with it, but you're not going to take much speed. It's going to go straight down. That's how those things happen. That pipe is not going to sail all the way across your vehicle. You see, it came off there and it's coming right at you. That's two things that we have questions about now, right? You're following me along with it. Right? I am. The injuries <coughs> are not consistent with the pipe. The fact that a pipe went through would the physics say that that's not going to happen also. You're driving on the morning. You're going to go up north camping. And we do that all the time, so you can't use that scenario. Okay. You can ask any of my kids. I'm a last you minute. Didn't, you, didn't, you didn't finish. You didn't finish. What I, yeah, I didn't finish. You didn't let me finish. It. Okay, sorry. Right. You're a last minute procrastinator packer. That's fine. So now, after a month of not talking to a guy that said he had a windshield for you to fix, which he disputes. He doesn't. He doesn't corroborate that with your story. You're going to go driving on a morning that your wife's got to be at school by 8, 8.30. You're going to drive somewhere, unknown location, to find a Ford pickup truck that should have the keys in it and pick that up and drive it back to your house to fix after a month of not having any contact with this person. After you went up looking for it the night before, up through Holman, but you didn't stop at his house because he said he wasn't home. How did you know he wasn't home? He works nights. Okay. He was working nights that night? Well, I think unless he went back to it, he gave up maintainer now, so maybe he went but back I to another crew. he was on vacation. So he His first day back was... Uh, He, he, Tuesday. he gave up maintainers, so I don't know if it was a vacation or if it was a transaction. So you didn't know it wasn't working nights, but you didn't know so that. I, I wasn't sure. You didn't know that. So you didn't know if it was home or not. Mm, I wasn't sure. No. But you didn't stop by after going to look for this truck that he wants you to fix the windshield on, driving up through Holman. You didn't bother to go up to his house to ask him maybe where it was or anything like that. You were just going to, on your own, willingly drive around home. And, and, and we, do, we take drives all the time. Absolutely. People take drives drive. all the time. But you're telling us that you're drive, going there to pick up this pickup truck so you can change it because your wife's been on you about the windshield that's in the, in the, drive, in the garage. That's three now, right? Okay. Kind of like three, three things that okay. were... Oh, yeah, you count that one because he disputes the fact that you, you can do any work for him at all. Okay. The only work you're going to do has been May. Okay. It was out of buddies. Okay. And this is a 250? The, what's a 250? The, the F-250. What are those called? Super duty. Okay. So you're going to do this work on this buddy, but you're not going to call him. You're going to go just, and it's Friday morning, you're just going to go to the top of Shufflebine Hill and see if you see a pickup truck in somebody's driveway. A Ford F-250 pickup truck in somebody's driveway. If you didn't, you're just going to take your wife back to your wife is not wearing jeans on a Friday like they normally always wear. She's wearing something else. Hopefully you're going to take her directly to there. Okay. Now we're looking at minimum of four things now. We're and and I did any of those? And I didn't dress my wife. I, I didn't say So I how she dressed for her Friday was... You had nothing to do with that. You know, Absolutely nothing to do with that. Because if I dressed her, it would be... Yeah, yep. nothing to do with it. You know, yep. that, that's her. That's her deal. Yep. And she knows she's going to work on a Friday, and she's going to put uh, the jeans on like she normally would. Yep. 
four. Um, you're not sure how those injuries happen on, on your neck. We don't have an explanation for that. We have your explanation to the injuries on your hand as caused by the windshield. It should be the left, left hand corn. Blood on the outside of the windshield, we can't explain that. Help us try to understand how this all happened. I, 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 I can talk here until I'm blue in the face. I told you guys. Not until you're ready to tell us what happened. I, 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 I'm telling you everything that I know about this. See, this. You're leaving out one detail. No, I'm not. Just one. You're gonna go camping that one. That's your other one. You're gonna go camping that weekend. But now I was gonna drive them up there, and I was gonna come back because you were late for work that time. I wasn't gonna be late for work. Yes, you were. I was gonna call in to work. Oh, you're gonna call in sick, which, which after, after they gave you the opportunity to take a, a day to the to switch to the night shift after they told you that you could do that, you're gonna take a sicker instead of taking the day that they're gonna give you. Help us understand, Todd. I, I, I can't help you anymore. You won't help us. You I can. will help you. You can, you, you. you can help us. You can help us explain all of this. You're not, you're, you don't want to, but. I want to. Then tell I us. Am. Then tell us. I, I, I can't tell you anymore. I can't tell you anymore. Significant injury to the back of the head. Significant, and it wasn't just one hit. I, I did not, did not do that. What happened? I didn't. I, I. What happened? I was driving the car. What happened? Sir, I, I can't. You I'm. Won't. I will, and I then, am. Then do. I, I am. I'm telling you what I can tell you. I'm telling you what I can tell you. You tell us what happened. Um, maybe when the um, you see what they didn't find you at the house and like that, why? Then you tell us. No, I, I, there's nothing I can tell you. I'm telling you everything that I can tell you about this. I don't think you are. Mom, well, I, no, I, I know you're not. I am. You're not. I am. I am. Like I've, I've told you numerous times, it wasn't an accident caused by a pipe going through the window. Something happened, and it was uncharacteristic of yourself. You're not a violent person. You're not. There's something that occurred. It, 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 you don't it, argue. You don't lose your cool. There's something occurred that caused this. There's absolutely nothing that occurred there. That, that well, I, there is. There is something that occurred that caused this, and it wasn't but, that accident. But, but, but it that wasn't was, that accident. You understand that. You told me that you know that those injuries could not have, all those different injuries could not have occurred as explained. The doctor told us that. I explained that to you. You sat there and shook your head. Yep. You yeah, I mean the doctor? And, has, and, and, and no, I don't know. There's no way. I don't know that the, the, the I mean, how the scenario of, of everything went, I don't know. I was, but as far as... I mean, if there, if there could have been, I mean, there, there's, um, you know, I don't know how, what happened there, how it happened. I do not know how... Well, you're you're telling me how it happened. You, you told me... I don't know how those occurred. injuries occurred yeah. as they did. And neither do I. Right. And how they occurred. I don't. I'm telling you, the story that you're giving us is not how they occurred. Those, all those injuries did not occur with that pipe going through that windshield. I know that for a fact. That okay. I know for a fact. 
So, so I am positive about that. You know they didn't. After so everyone else, you know that that didn't happen that way. So when do they get their results from what they're doing? They're working on them as we speak. Okay. They're still working on them. Okay. They've got all that stuff going on. You know that didn't happen that way. You so know that there was injuries. Could not have happened with the pipe. There's no question in my mind, in your mind, that here, 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 uh, three to the back of the head, here, to the the crushing of the with with marks around the neck, bruising around the neck, and a uh, fractured bone. Those it didn't happen with with that coming through that windshield. The velocity of that thing, if you're saying as it is, would have gone would have hit your wife in the head, it would have gone right through. If that's what you're saying, and we know that that's not possible. So, do I got to wait here until Tell we get me. that done? You can leave, you can leave anytime you want. I told you that before. I want to work you with can, you guys, but I don't want to sit I, here and, and well, I, I, like to, I just want to figure out what happened. And so do I. And so do I. That's a part I of the problem. Know that. Is, I know that you know. If, if, if I knew, I would say something. Really? Yes. You would? I, I would tell you if I knew what happened to my wife. You know what happened to your wife? I, I do not know how the injuries happened. They didn't happen there, and you said you knew that, or you, shook, I, your, you shook your head going, yeah, I agree with you. I didn't agree with you. You're just shaking I your said head it's, it's, it's very unlikely. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our, doctors, our, just, doctors are not just saying unlikely. You know, have stranger things happen? They have. Stranger things have happened. Okay, so and this, this, this is a stranger thing that happened. I, I don't want to say, I want to accuse you of grasping at straws, but try to explain then how can all these different injuries happen with a pipe coming through, uh, uh, supposedly coming through a windshield? They can't. Stranger things cannot, they, there's no explanation for it. There's zero explanation for that, that there's three <coughs> lacerations in the back head with cracked skull. There's injuries all over the front of the face, including the neck, with uh, two-inch pipes going through, going through the windshield, and hitting her. At the speeds that you're saying, you know what you know what that result was. Like. Something happened. You know where it happened. You know when it happened. We're just you're not telling us. You're they're, they're, you say it didn't happen to the house. You're adamant about it didn't happen to the house. It didn't happen to the house. Okay, well, what did it happen if it didn't happen to the house? So, 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 some, some other questions that came up. Um, you said you owed a, about $150,000. Okay, I think, right, I think they're on that. Okay, they found some bills out at the house for around fifty to 60000 that's the, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the home, that's a home mortgage, right? That well, sounds like it's contractor bills or something like that. So maybe some contractors you use for these flips? Oh, no, my, the only contract that I have is uh, Allied Electric. Okay. Everything else is all paid. So what are these bills? Um, I don't know where they got them from. Are they paid? The only one that's not paid is contractor supply. Or no, no, Allied Electric, I mean. And, and he just that? got that. That was an addition they did after the sale. It was 4000 Okay. So it's accurate to say you don't owe $50,000 to contractors? contractors. No, that's all so paid. So the only other contractors is something. I just got some shingles. We, we left their house. Okay. I just got them. It was like $1,100 or something. No, no, that, that, that's all paid. Okay. The other question I, I guess I put together at the time was that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said the two of you are traveling to pick up this truck, and if it was there, you were going to jump in that truck, bring it back to the house, and that your wife was going to help you fix it. She helped. She said it when she was home. Oh, she work, said it. Okay. Which is 15 minutes after work. Was I tell her practice money, when she gets home, we said it, and it's probably 15 minutes and it's done. Okay. And that's how we were going to pay for the camp and for the Warren's Cranberry Festival. Okay. So I guess I'm trying to figure out why, why do it the day before you're leaving when you had a month to do it. I didn't know. I just. And hold up your trip. Because we weren't in a hurry because of the rain and stuff. Keep going with the trip. 
We just we weren't in a hurry to get going with this trip. Doesn't that clue have to set though before it's driven in the rain? I wouldn't have took it back. He, they they have come get him. You we get them at the house and they come and get him. Okay. But we don't usually take them back. Okay. Is so there a reason to, you need to pick it up and not take it back? So I have two trips back. Okay. Does that make sense to you? I mean, it's, how it's, the day, it's the day you're going to leave for a weekend. If you ask anybody that, I'm a procrastinator that way. Okay. I'll try to get 10 things done the last day before we do something. Every time, all the time. Okay. Like and turn your wife up to getting ready and you getting all the supplies together. And Most of my stuff is ready. Just the house stuff is what's got to go in at the end. Okay. All right. Um, just to let you know, we, we did check the video You're from the bank that's right at 16 and M there yep. for obviously time frame well before and well after. And there's only two trucks that, that were there. They were both white. No, we it's, not white. it's not white at all. No, I know for a fact it wasn't white. Okay. I know for a fact it wasn't a white truck. Okay. Is there any way you could explain why it wouldn't have come through? I Osmosburg, maybe. Okay. Cross Osmos to go to Medora or, or up sea over that way, I, I, you know. Or could have took Moose Road. It's just a, you know, a I, I, combination I, of things that I understand certainly that. don't look good. I, I know, I understand that. Okay. Um, and, 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 um, you know, I, I, I should look. Are my kids out here, or where are they? I, I'm not sure. I didn't ask him that. I should, can I other. call him real quick? Or he no? knows what's going on. You're in there? Because he was out at the house when they did the search for so yeah. Okay. Sure okay. Just so they know what's going on. That's sure. my biggest thing. Uh, I get that impression, so. Okay. And that's probably why he's calling me so much. So, you know, we're not, you know, we could sit here and pawn through it with you every time, but if you, you're just going to let the evidence speak for it, you're not the first guy that's, that, that maybe doesn't want to come forward. But people are going to want answers. It's not about me and Investigator Leinfelder are just hammering you with questions in the hope that, that we get some trophy at the end of the day it's, it, that has nothing to do with it. Right. What's going to happen is family's going to want to know, friends are going to want to know, and if they find out all this, this stuff, they're going to say what happened to Todd. Right. You had mentioned that you're going to do this windshield to help pay for camping for the weekend? That's what we, we do a lot of this little trinket stuff like that for stuff like that. Okay, for the windshield and that. Um, I that, just had that conversation. Oh, you did? I mean, okay. Yeah. So you're going to fix the windshield and then how are you going to get paid? He needs the money there. He didn't leave it in the garage. Oh, how much was it going to cost? What did you? $240. 240 and yeah, that was already negotiated with um, who? Justin. Well, <laughs> that was way back when, but... Um, when did you, and you ordered the, the windshield? I've had the windshield there for... I'm sure there's a date on it. That's the one I got it. Usually there's a date on it, I think. And then you said that was August? A month ago? No. I, I have to go back and look and see when I, it's been, a, it's been, it's been there for a long time. I don't remember for sure. What, we moved it from one garage to the other garage. And I don't remember for sure. I don't remember for sure. When did you move it? Oh. Such a clean recently. Yeah. Well, my wife cleans. She cleans the, the garage that's attached to the house all the time. Um, I don't remember when. It, it's been. It's been. I don't, I don't know when I moved it. I don't remember. It's been a while. Is you, but you had it there months, so you obviously. At least a month. Last month. Yeah. Okay. And where did you buy it from? 
Glass on wheels is where I get my windshield. Glass on wheels, so they'd have a record of it. I'm sure it would. I bought who would, from him. Who would have, uh, you said you would have, they would have picked it, picked it up at your house. Who would have picked it up at your house? The person that owned the truck. How would they know to do that? I would have contacted Justin and I'd just get him, square up with him and but Justin, I've never, never but, Justin, but Justin, I'm confused. Okay, okay, let me explain Justin I'm confused. To you. Justin had a conversation with you and May, said, hey, I've got a buddy that needs a windshield repair, and you said, I've got one. They wait a while, according to Justin, his buddy says, hey, Justin contacts you, you say, that one's gone. Justin said, okay. Never had another conversation with you about it. Right. Ever. And and then you this is so that's May mm, Juneish. In August you order a windshield for Justin's buddy, you don't know who it is. And, and it may have been well before August. I'm 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 just throwing that date out. I've had it for a while. Okay. I, I don't yeah, no 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 negotiations with Justin other than when it started out and he called you and said you you sold the one that you had just said okay no negotiations about could you get me another one the price is this anything else you reorder one sometime later don't contact justin at all regarding about it nothing you don't know who the guy who owns the car you don't know any of that correct no i don't you don't know where he lives. Which is a lot of jobs I do. You don't know where he lives. You don't know what his name is. I have an idea, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of jobs. And, and then, Justin, know. you're going to fix it off of a truck that you may see someplace along the road. You're going to take that truck from wherever, take it to your house, fix the windshield, call Justin, and then that guy's going to come pick the truck up at your house and leave you money. Where? I think mean, I got a deck box. All in time for you to make this trip for the weekend. No, we would have had the you money when we got back. Money to spend. We would have had the money when we got back. What's the goal? We only go for the weekend and then come back. You owe any money to an excavation company? Um, Bill Hyder? Yeah. Mr. Lou? Mm -hmm. How much? Four thousand. Yeah. From what? Um, January or something. But we got. I mean, we we work together with that. He's fine sending a bill in June and still being out mm -hmm. out yeah. in September. Yeah. He's yeah. fine with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just talked to him. We're out for fish here a month or month ago or so. And, okay. Um, I just talked to him and told him I'd be getting squared up with him and he was. He does a lot of excavating and stuff for us. Um, we get you some of your construction stuff from Menards. Yep. Do you have a Menards card or how does yeah, that work? A charge I have, count? Or? I have a Menards card. Okay. How much is on that? Probably $4,500, 4, Okay. Are there any other bills that you have outstanding right now that are in the thousands? Do you have um, a Sears account? I have a Sears and a Visa account. What's the Sears at? 3000 I think. Okay. What's your account for Allied? Is it Allied Electric? Yeah. I just got that. I've been fighting with him to get that. I just got that. You remember what that is? What, how much it is? Mm -hmm. 6000 But I got... I got, um... I think twelve thousand in, in my account for the. Um, I got twelve thousand in my account for. So I had twenty two thousand in there, and I went and got some of this stuff started for Barb. I took some of that out. So you had twenty two thousand in an account. In my checking account for okay. my house. All right. And then, do you, are you told, when you say the, the arrangements and stuff like that? Yeah. 
So you wrote checks for those, or? I, I got a money order for some of it. Okay. And then I got cash for some of it. How much of each? 5,000. 5,000 money order, 5,000 cash. Yep. Yeah, because they said they couldn't order her stone until we paid half down. Okay. And so we want to get the kids down there. The investigation is ongoing, and as you know, there's a lot of things that they're they're going to come back with. That now is the time to get out in front of them. If you had the opportunity to do that, you're saying that you can't. I think that you won't right now. But there's going to be things that are becoming coming out through the course of this investigation. Yeah. Hey, there's there's a lot of the things that are in the course of this investigation right now that as I went through like five different things with you of what you said happened to can't happen. I remember I explained all of those. Okay, and 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 you're gonna and and for for you to use that and say that I said they can't happen. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I, I, not that you, you you didn't agree that they can't happen. I'm saying that, I'm saying that they can't they can't happen. I'm not saying that you agreed with me and said that they can't. Yeah, I agree with you. They can't happen. I'm not saying that at all. Right. So that you don't have to explain that. Yeah. I'm just that's what I'm telling you that there's there's so many things that the, the from Justin. Yeah. Just the Justin story, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah, and that's I don't, care thing. Which, I don't It's not the only thing. Well, but that's you know, not the yeah. only thing. Okay. Okay. That is not the only thing. Okay. The fact that there, I mean, again, I don't have to go through with you anymore. Right, right. And you know. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know if Mark explained to you or not, but we have a uh, search warrant to get your DNA. Okay. Um, all it is is us taking a swab of the You don't inside. need search warrants for this uh, stuff. Well, we, that's how they... In these type of situations, that's what we do. We could ask for consent. We had it. If you want to give this consent, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we just—it's just a swab the inside of your mouth, and that gets sent in. So we have your DNA on file. Yeah, like gum. Yeah. We want just spit your gum out there. So did they completely destroy my house, or did they put it back together somewhat? I don't think they're going to completely destroy it. Okay. I, I mean. They're not tearing walls off, if that's what you mean. But I mean, like, or, you know, I mean, I still want to go home and they got everything just strewn all over. Yeah, and then, all, like I said, we're here, so I don't right. assume that it's... Okay. And that's, I'm, I'm fine they're there. They wouldn't need a search warrant to come in. Um, I'm, I'm 100%... Well, sometimes we don't get that kind of cooperation, so... I so that's when we go ahead and go ahead and put the... We get our get all of our search warrants and papers in order if we need them. We need them. Okay. We don't have them. That's just yeah. that's it. You need to look at my other vehicle I got out here or no? Where's it out? What's that? Parking lot? Yeah. Well, no, it's out now. Whose is it? Yeah, it's across the street. It's yours or your son's? Mine. It's our, our Tahoe. Okay. Okay. Can you show me? Did you get nothing in there? Yeah. And just, just swab the inside of your cheek, okay? No pain, just... Well, I'm going to stand to my word until 
I mean, I, I'm going to... Until I'm, when? Until I... Until you can't stand anymore, until so you're back in the corner? No. Now's the time to get it out. And, and I can, I'll be in the corner it's now. Tough. It's tough. I, 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 I'll stand in the corner then. I mean, I'll get out of the corner. I, I'm... Uh, Truth releases you. I know it does. I know it does. I know it does. And I'm, I have nothing, nothing I'm lying about. Nothing. Maybe lie of omission about it. Is it what? Lie of omission, possibly. What's that mean? By not telling us what you have, but you know. If I knew more, I would tell it to you. I wish that was true. And, and, and you don't know me very well, so you can say that. I wish it was true. I, I, I really, um, you know, I mean, um, and, and I know under the circumstances what it is, but. Well, um, the circumstances are one thing, and then your explanation is a completely other thing, which is completely far-fetched, unbelievable, as you can possibly imagine. It, you, no, no one in, no one of her right mind is gonna buy that story that you just told. I can't, I can't help it. I, I can't. You have a, a, after the fact, you have an explanation for things that you told before. That oh no no, I meant th this was this. I, I didn't was change this. nothing. You added other things to it. Well, I didn't say I was going camping all weekend. We, you were all the time. I, I, well, I just switched that. You didn't know that we knew that you. We checked with your work that you're supposed to work at 6:30 at night. You didn't know that we talked to Justin and said Justin said. I haven't talked to him about a windshield and and, and me. And if that is stuff that I was going to be worried about, don't you think I would have called them and said, oh, hey, what's going on, or here's what's what? No, you know better than that. No, I don't. I don't plan. I don't do this stuff. Obviously, you didn't plan, because this is, I this don't is do this stuff. life right now. I don't. Something happened that you're not telling us. Okay. You know I appreciate your time. You know the injuries are, are what they are. They didn't occur as you said them. You're the only one that was there. You're the only one that knows. I am Barb. And you know everything. Yeah, and Barb, we can't ask Barb, now can no, we? we can't. We can't ask Barb, we can ask you. And you're the only one that's going to be able to tell us. In her in her memory, you're the only one that's going to be able to tell us. Yeah. Someday you're going to. I think you're going to. It's going to fester and rot. You're not going to be, it's going to, you're going to tell us what, what happened. Accidents happened. And it wasn't the accident on the road. There was an accident that happened prior to that between you and Barb. And things got out of hand, and things things shouldn't have happened that happened, but they happened, oh. and that's what it is. I would never, never, I don't care what the explanation was, hurt my wife or anybody for that reason, especially in that manner. Something happened, something something triggered it. You said you don't snap, but something happened. So you're going to let me happened. know where the next step goes or what? If you want to know, all you got to do is call. So I can call any time and see what's... Yeah, you bet. Do you have a card? I'll get you one before I leave here. Okay. I just want to make sure you got the opportunity to let us know if there's anything that you're, you haven't told us. I, I... There's nothing. Here's your copy here, Touch. Get the card. DNA sample. Oh, I don't need this. Okay. I mean, should I keep this or? Keep it if you want to. So now I just wait for them to get the search warrant back and the. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, not the search warrant, warrant, but the. Yeah, what they. They have to finish up out there, and they'd rather just get it done. Not any. They haven't even heard this yet. Right. Okay. So I'll call the kids and find out where. They've been calling, so I, I'll find out where they are, and we'll just wait until. Um, so how will we know when they're done? What what do I do there? Uh, how about I call you? Can we call you on the phone? Yeah, on this one. Why don't you give me the number? I know I jotted it down somewhere. But... Seven nine zero. Okay. Five three four seven. Four seven. You like it for a while? Yeah. I'll have this for for a little while. Questions? All right. No, I don't. Just make sure he's down here and we'll be on our way. You want to head out then? If he's done, yeah. yeah. Fritz?
take a break before you uh, begin further questions. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I have you step out for at least 10 minutes. Uh, we'll take a short break and uh, again, don't talk about the case. And we'll give you a heads up when we ask you back. Green team, may continue. <clears throat> Investigator Leinfelder, during the interview that we just watched, uh, you had your phone out at certain times and appeared to be looking at it. Can you explain why you were doing that? Yes, during the course of the interview, we had other investigators and members of the Sheriff's Department that were watching uh, the video uh, on their computers. Also had uh, officers that were out at the house during the execution of the search warrant, and they would periodically send text messages of things of questions that they may have or things that came up while watching the interview of the people that were at the Sheriff's Department. And then the officers that would have been at the, where the search warrant was being served um, would report things that they may have found or things that they've thought of interest that they would send either Investigator Yaley or myself that information. So during the course of that, we saw in video, it appeared I was looking at my phone and that's typically what I was, I was answering or, or reading uh, the questions that other investigators or officers had or information that they were trying to provide to us. Uh, was that where the information about the possible blood spots came from? Yes, we had received uh, uh, a text message uh, from out at the Ken Hammer residence that there was a possible blood found in uh, one of the garages. There were a number of questions about uh, finances and possible debt. Why, why were you asking so many questions about finances? When you do an investigation, there's certain things we have to try to establish um, or prove or disprove. Either way, we need to know that those are motives. Um, sometimes there's crimes are, are financially motivated sometimes. So all the different questions that we're asking through that period um, of time are things that can be established. Is, is there a motive for anything? You know, is, is it a financial motive? Is this so? I mean, those questions are, are used to, you know, basically to elicit the response, to gather response, to determine if we, maybe it was a financial motive, maybe if it wasn't a financial motive. Uh, throughout the interview, um, Mr. Kanehammer said a number of times repeatedly that he did not know the answer to your questions. Why did you ask so many questions after that when he would say he didn't know? When you're conducting an interview, you're basically, you know, there's verbal and nonverbal uh, communication going on um, amongst things. You can see things of how a person sits, how they react to questions, open and close. Um, <coughs> patterns can be developed just by asking questions. There was questions in which I asked Todd, and his first initial response was, I don't know, I don't know, I don't remember. Um, he would then go on to answer that question, and uh, some of the questions we had, you know, we knew the answers to ahead of time that he would answer the question correctly. So when he develops that, he's saying, I don't know, I don't know, we continued on a little bit further, and then he would then um, answer the question for, for however pattern, this kind of a pattern that he kind of developed. So, you know, it, it may have seemed like I was, you know, asking over and over again, but it was eliciting responses and he was answering the questions that we knew correctly. So that was kind of a pattern thing that we uh, that I picked up on, so that's why I would ask those questions over and over. He also had his phone during his interview that rang a number of times? Yes, he did. Was there ever an attempt to take his phone away or restrict him from any phone usage? Um, I think one time he maybe said maybe you could silence it so it didn't ring or put it on vibrate, um, but we never, we allowed him to have his phone through the whole time. Um, I said, I, I told him at the beginning of the interview he was free to leave, he didn't have to talk to us if he didn't want to. And you know he had his phone with him to answer, answer it any time he wanted to. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greenkey. Hurley. Good afternoon, Detective. Good afternoon. Your title, Detective, derives from the word to detect, correct? I'm an investigator is my title, but yes, that would be correct. Even investigator, from to investigate, correct? 
Yes. The, the purpose of investigation is to find fact. Is that correct? Yes. And from fact, one might then make deductions or inferences, correct? Yes. But first, you have to have all the facts, right? Yes. On, on the day of your interview with Mr. Kenham, there were two search warrants at least that had been issued, correct? Yes. One for Mr. Ken Hammer's home? Yes. The other for his person in order to take that buckle swab from his cheek, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. And you were aware of that beforehand? Yes, sir. And you were aware that this interview was ideally going to take place while those search warrants were being effected without his knowledge, correct? Yes. And you were aware that the phone call that uh, Investigative Sergeant Yaley had placed to him had really been under false pretenses, correct? False pretenses. You agree? I, what, what are the false pretenses that they were made? That he told him he wanted to come, have him come in and look at video. And, and, and straighten some things out, yes. Well, he said he wanted him to come in and look at video. Did you hear that tape? I did not hear that tape. And when Mr. Ken Hammer came in, he said something about the video, and you addressed him as though he were going to hear about that video. Is that correct? I think we talked to him about some of the things on video. Did I ask you whether you talked to him about it? No, you didn't. Okay, this is my day to ask the questions, all right? So he asked you about that video, and you didn't tell him that he wasn't going to see the video. Is that correct? I didn't tell him that he wasn't going to see the video? That's correct. When he asked you about the video, you didn't say, we're really not going to look at video today. No, I didn't say that. No. And <clears throat> you said to him, or either you or Mr. Yaley said to him, that he was there because, in part, because his first two interviews had been conducted under circumstances where he was highly emotional. Do you recall that? I, I agree with that, yes. And you talked to him about all the people that were coming from out of town, correct? I did. And you were aware that the funeral for his wife was the next day. Is that correct? I, I think the wake was Friday and the funeral was Saturday. Did you really expect him to be unemotional when he came in that day? I didn't have any expectations on how he was going to be that day. You should have known probably from the tape within the first 120 seconds that he was upset that day, correct? Yes. Nonetheless, you went ahead with this interview, correct? Yes, we did. Now, for the police to obtain search warrants such as were obtained with respect to Mr. Kenhammer, one has to petition a judge, is that correct? Yes. And in petitioning the judge, one has to submit an affidavit that establishes some kind of probable cause for such a search, correct? Yes, we do. And you were aware that that had been done? Yes. When were you assigned to the case? Uh, I was assigned to the case on the first day, on the day that it occurred. And as of the date of the interview, had you personally spoken with Dr. McCubbin? No, I had not. As of the date of the interview, had you any results from the crime lab? No, I had not. Uh, as of the date of the interview, did you, had you sought a second opinion, that is one in addition to Dr. McCubbin, from another pathologist or medical doctor? Not to my knowledge. Had you spoken with an expert on glass? No, I had not. Had you spoken about the occurrence with an engineer? No, I had not. Had you spoken about the occurrence with a biomechanic? No, I had not. Had you spoken about the occurrence with a physicist? No, I had not. And you're not a medical doctor, correct? I am not a medical doctor. Nor an expert on glass? I am not an expert on glass. Nor a biomechanic? I am not a biomechanic. Nor an engineer? Nor an engineer nor a physicist. Nor a physicist. Yet you engaged in some talk about physics with Mr. Ken Hammer, is that correct? Yes, I did. And 
I, I presume you had high school physics? Yes, I did. Any training in physics beyond that? Not beyond that, no. Do you remember from high school physics that one of Newton's laws is that an object in motion will stay in motion unless intersected by another force? Yes. So if a pipe comes rolling off a truck, it's not going to drop straight down, is it? Gravity, from what I understand, it, the gravity would take control of that and drop it straight down, yes. Doesn't Newton's law say it's going to continue in a lateral motion unless intersected by another force? The other force would be gravity. And you think any, if, so if I pitch you a coin, it's not going to get farther than the edge of this desk, correct? That's not true because there's forces that you're th pitching the coin with, the way I understand That's correct. it. That's correct. Somebody told you about what Dr. McCubbin said, is that correct? Yes. What were you told that Dr. McCubbin said? I was told of the injuries uh, to Barbara, um, the different planes, obviously, that the injuries that occurred on, and their opinion that uh, these injuries could not be caused by a pipe coming through a windshield. You said their opinion. Is that the, plural? The airplane, I'm sorry, the doctor's opinion. Which doctor? The You're talking plural. I, I misspoke. So is it Dr. McCubbin's opinion? I believe it was Dr. McCubbin's opinion. Were you told that Dr. McCubbin arrived at the opinion that a single impact from a pipe, with or without subsequent breaking and possible whiplash type injury, could not account for the multitude of injuries? I don't know if I heard that definition of it or that okay. opinion. So you proceeded on what somebody told you, correct? correct. And You weren't present on those first occasions when Mr. Kenhammer spoke with police officers, is that correct? That's correct, I was not. So somebody, again, told you about that? That's correct. And essentially what you were told is that Mr. Kenhammer said he was driving along when a pipe came through the windshield, correct? Essentially, that's what I was told, yes. In the interview, you accused him of lying, correct? Can you give me a specific of what you're referring to? Well, you told him when, when he was, uh, give me a moment, I gotta figure out where to begin. When he told you that for a long time he had replaced windshields, didn't you say that's a complete lie? Didn't you say you don't do that at all and you raised your voice? I don't recall saying that to him. I knew that he had done windshield works. I knew he had worked a previous job in glass with windshields. All those times that you told him uh, you're not telling us everything, wasn't that accusing him of lying? I guess you could put it that way that it was. And how many times did you do that? Like I said, it developed a pattern when in his I answers. I didn't ask you. I don't. I don't know that. exactly how many times. Sorry. Please listen to my question and answer. How many times? I don't know. Thirty. I don't know. Forty. Josh, your honor asked an answer. He doesn't know. Sustained. Weren't you accusing him of killing his wife? I was trying to develop facts, have him explain to me how this occurred. What was my question, sir? And I told you what I was doing. No, I was not what? trying to accuse him of killing his wife. You weren't. I was trying to elicit facts. What was my question, sir? And I told you what I was doing. No, I was not what? trying to accuse him of killing his wife. You weren't. I was trying to elicit facts, elicit statements, understand how this happened. When you said to him, I'm willing to bet that when we get the scrapings back from her fingernails, it's going to be your skin under it. Was that trying to elicit fact? Or were you accusing him of having killed her? I was trying to elicit a response.
you told him a lot of things that were inaccurate. Isn't that correct? Again, could you give me an example of that and I'd answer that? Well, you told her that, you told him that Barbara's nose was broken. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And in fact, it wasn't broken. It was only fractured. Is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. Told you the same thing. Sustained. It's not the same thing. Sustained. You told him that there was blood found in the garage. I did tell him that. And you had received a text in the middle of this saying possible blood was found in the garage, correct? Yes. So when you told him blood was found in the garage, that wasn't accurate, was it? Suspected blood, yes, it's not accurate that it was confirmed to be blood. You told him that he slammed her head in the garage floor. No, I did not. Didn't you suggest that to him? No, I did not. You told him that his I wife- that was Investigator Yaley that did that. Oh, did you correct Investigator Yaley? I did not. You told him that his wife wasn't wearing the proper uniform that day, is that correct? That is correct. I'm gonna show you what's previously been marked as Exhibit 206. This was the proper uniform, correct? I believe so. And that's what she was wearing that day, correct? I believe so. How many times did you tell him that he was lying because she wasn't wearing the proper uniform. Again, you know, the information I had at the time of uh, this interview was that she wasn't wearing the proper interview. Did I'm I not, I'm not sure. What, what, what did I ask you what the information was that she had? No, you didn't. What did I ask you? Could you ask it again? Would the reporter please read back my question? I don't know. You say you were trying to get information. If you were trying to get information, one would ask, were you going camping, correct? Yes. But you didn't ask, were you going camping? You told him you were not going camping, correct? At one point I did, correct? And you told him you weren't going camping as a way of telling him, you're not telling the truth, correct? I don't believe that's how it, uh, in context, was said. Shall we look at it again? That, I... He told you, correctly, what the policy was where he worked for calling in sick for vacation and for trades. And you accused him of being untruthful, is that correct? Yes. You told him he was grasping at straws, correct? Yes. So this wasn't about getting information. This was about trying to get a confession, correct? This is the entire time I was trying to make sense of the story in which he was he had told us that it didn't make sense to the investigators that were involved in the case. He told you when he walked in that he hadn't taken his medication, correct? That's correct. He was crying and emotional, correct? He was very upset. You put him in a small room with you and another police officer, correct? Yes. When he would try to talk to you, you would speak over him and interrupt him? At correct? times. How, how many, 50 times? I don't know. You've heard of good cop, bad cop? I have. And that's what we saw here today, wasn't it? There's no intention of that, no. It just happened naturally? I wouldn't say that. You would raise your voice, correct? At times I did. You would talk over him when he tried to answer, correct? Correct. You would push your chair up close to him, correct? At times, yes. You would accuse him of lying, correct? At times. You told him those injuries did not happen in that accident, and when he tried to respond, 
you said it three times and cut him off, correct? Yes. When you asked him about scratches and he said, I don't know, you asked him again and again and again and again and again, correct? Correct. I know where the badger stayed, but do you think that's a good way to get information? Excuse me? I said, I know we're called the badger state. Do you think badgering someone is a good way to get information? I believe it was working because he was saying he didn't know, he didn't know, didn't know, and then would make a, make a statement towards it, which was a correct statement as we have found. We developed that pattern of him saying, I don't know, and then being able to answer the question. So for me repeatedly to ask him over again, that was, that was what we what developed as a What was my question, pattern. sir? Uh, the Badger State, I believe, we're in the Badger State, was Badger, and may, I explained that. I asked the reporter to read the question. The question is that I know we're called the Badger State. Do you think badgering someone is a good way to get information? That's a yes or a no. Yes. So on this day when he's in an emotional state, when he's about to bury his wife the next day, You bring him in, you tell him that you're executing search warrants on his home, correct? Yes. You tell him that he's lied, correct? I tell him that he's lied? Yes. Yes. You suggest to him through his, your questioning that he killed his wife, correct? I don't think I was suggesting anything. Well. Wasn't the comment about banging her head on the garage floor such a suggestion? I didn't make that suggestion. But you didn't I, correct it either, did you? I did not make the correction. Was not. And the inquiry about her uniform provoked him to say to you, are you insinuating that I killed my wife? Do you recall that? I do. Now, when you asked about the uniform and why she wasn't wearing the proper uniform, you were suggesting that he may have dressed her after having injured her, isn't that correct? No, it's not correct at all. Well, he told you that she dressed herself, is that correct? Yes. And you weren't satisfied with that answer, were you? I was. Well, why did you ask two more times? The information, the information I had was that she wasn't wearing that uniform. I understand, but you told me you were satisfied the first time. Why did you ask two more times if you weren't trying to suggest something. Because the patterns of the asking the questions I had with Todd was that he would not either say, I don't know, for a period of time, and then answer the question. I understand, but you told me this time you were satisfied, correct? And I was double checking my work. And in all the time that he's in an emotional state and you have him in this room and you are Hitting him with these questions about how he isn't being complete with you, isn't telling you the truth, suggesting that he is responsible for his wife's death. Did he ever once snap? No, he did not. You were dissatisfied because you did not have explanations for the other injuries that occurred to Mrs. Kendhammer, is that correct? Correct. And because you didn't have other explanations for those injuries at that time, you accused somebody of lying, correct? Correct. And you understand that today we're in a court of law, correct? Yes. And today, when an allegation is made against my client, it is incumbent not for him to satisfy your unanswered questions, but for the state to prove its allegation. Objection Correct? relevance sustained. No further questions. Mr. Green, can anything else? Uh, yes, Your Honor, please. Investigator Leinfelder, you were asked a question about the number of people you did not consult before the interview, a glass expert, an engineer, 
or a biomechanist, do you remember that? Yes. Do you ever talk to those people in any case before an interview? No. You seem dissatisfied with his answer about where he was going on Thursday night and Friday morning. Did you need an expert to follow that? No. When you collect information from other officers, um, how do you do that before an interview? We have briefings. Um, in cases like this, we'd have almost daily, almost twice a day briefings that we gather information from that. There's other reports that can be read or discussed over um, many different ways. There are, like, like I explained in the in the interview when you saw me on the phone, there's. I was receiving information through text messages, things, things like that. Is there a lot of information changing daily? Yes, investigations are always changing. Is it a dynamic situation? Very dynamic. You were asked about accusations that you made uh, towards Mr. Ken Hammer. Um, instead of asking questions, does an accusation ever elicit a response just as a question does? Yes. The interview room that you used, where is that interview room? It's in the Sheriff's Department. What type of interviews do you do in that room? Um, all kinds of interviews. We interview uh, victims um, of crimes there. We interview suspects in, in there. Um, almost all kinds of different crimes that we, we investigate, <coughs> we'll interview people in that room. Are people ever upset or nervous when you interview them? Yes, they are. Do you still interview them when they're in that state? Yes, we do. Do people ever cry or get mad? Yes, very often. Why don't you give people time to come back when they're in a more, in a different state? Um, typically, the sooner you can get an in, uh, in interview done, um, either and it's each person's different between victims and suspects and that they're all different. Some people remember things uh, more clearly uh, the sooner it is to the event. Some have better recall a little bit farther away from the event, so it all, all, de all depends. Um, you'd like to try to get it as soon uh, as you can to the actual event. Uh, there were a couple of terms used during the interview, such as uh, Sheffelbein Hill and Long Cooley. Do you know where Sheffelbein Hill is? Sheffelbein Hill is, uh, I guess for lack of better terms, it's on County Road M. It would be the back side of County Road M on the north north side of the hill. It would be considered Sheffelbein Hill. And do you know where Long Cooley is? Long Cooley would be County Road V, uh, which goes north out of Holman. At the time of the interview, did you or any other law enforcement know anything about Barbara's work schedule? No, we did not. That's all I have. Really? No, no recross here. Okay, at this time, does any uh, juror have a question of Investigator Leinfelder? See at least one hand. Four.
All right, the court had two uh, questions, 504 and 505, and the court will not ask this witness those questions. I think other witnesses may address those areas. So don't take anything from that. All right, anything else? Not from me, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, you may step down. Thank you. Thank you. Rich Amundsen. Under penalties of perjury, do you solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you please state your name for the record? It's Richard Amundsen, A-M-U-N-D-S-E-N. -E and how are you employed? As a deputy sheriff with the Cross County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been in, employed in that capacity? Since 1998. And were you employed in that capacity on September 16th of last year? Yes. What were your duties at that time with the Sheriff's Department? My duties at that time were I was assigned to the investigative division um, as part of a um, transferable position where we spent a short time in investigations. Um, okay. Um, so you were acting as an investigator at that time? Yes. And have you ever been employed with any other jurisdictions? Yes. As a police officer? Yes. And where was that? I've been employed by the West Salem Police Department and the City of Berlin. Is it fair to say then, with respect to West Salem, that you're familiar with the roads in that area? Yes. And are you familiar with the case that we're here for today? Yes. Did you in participate with the investigation? Yes, I did. And did you go to the scene on September 16th? Yes, I did go to the scene. Uh, what was your role there? Domsky, let's bring the microphone a little closer. I'm having a little hard time hearing you. What was your role at the scene? <clears throat> The, the scene had been secured by Sergeant Valencia and other patrol deputies. Uh, I was the first investigator uh, at that location, and I followed Barbara Kenhammer to Gunnarsson Lutheran Medical Hospital. In the ambulance? Or you? I, f I followed the ambulance. Okay. And when you got to the hospital, what did you do? My intent was to see if I could uh, get any statement from Barbara Kenhammer on how she had become injured. However, she was receiving emergency medical care, uh, was unable to speak. The next thing I was going to do was try to attempt to take photographs of Barbara. However, with the emergency care that she was receiving from Gunderson Lutheran medical staff, that was not gonna be um, available. Did you do anything while you were there? I did speak with uh, Todd Kenhammer when he arrived with Sergeant Yaley. Okay. And um, what did you speak to him about? I observed that Todd Kenhammer had some injuries um, to his body. I had my digital f uh, camera with, and I asked Todd for consent to take photographs of his body. Why did you want to take photographs? It's my experience of being a police officer for so long that we don't know what's going to be evidence or not evidence, and the best way to investigate something is to preserve it as close to the time frame of the incident. Okay, I'm gonna pull up those photos that you took. <coughs> and these are exhibits 78 through 82, which the parties have agreed to have admitted. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, I'll receive those and you agree to them being published at this time? I do. 78 through 82? Correct. 83? 82. 80. 82. 82 then will be received and you can publish it. It actually is 83, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Is that all right with you then? Yes. 
maybe three. Okay. Can you tell us what this photo is depicting? That was, I believe, one of the first photos I took of Mr. Kenhammer, just an overall um, shot from head to toe. Can we, so I'm sorry, can we just go back and identify that by number just so the record is, is clear? Sorry, that's Exhibit 78. Thank you. And then looking at Exhibit 79, can you tell us what that photo is showing? That is a picture of Mr. Ken Hammer's left hand. And why did you take that photo? I took that because I could observe that there was obvious injury to his left hand, uh, fresh from my experience, and wanted to preserve that. And looking at what's been marked as Exhibit 80, what is that photo showing and why did you take it? That was a picture of Mr. Ken Hammer's right hand. Same thing, just preserving uh, what it looked like as close to the scene as I could. Did you observe injuries on that hand? Yes, there were abrasions that appeared to be and scratches that appeared to be fresh. <coughs> we're looking at what's been marked as Exhibit 81. Can you tell us what that photo is showing? That is the left side of Mr. Ken Hammer's neck and face area. And why did you take that photo? Uh, when I looked at Mr. Kenhammer, you could clearly see that there was some scratches uh, and uh, abrasions on his left side of his face and neck. And then showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 82. Can you tell us what that photo is? That is a picture of Mr. Kenhammer's right side of his face and neck area. And again, why did you take that photo? Because I could visibly see uh, scratches and uh, abrasions on that side of his face just to document it. And then showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 83. Can you tell us what this photo is? That is a photo that depicts more of the right side of Mr. Ken Hammer's chest. And why did you take it? Because I could visibly see what looked like scratch marks uh, abrasions on his chest area to document it as well. Did you say you spoke to Mr. Ken Dammer? Yes. Um, and can you tell me about that conversation? The conversation I had with Mr. Ken Hammer, looking at his overall appearance and the scratches on his uh, face, neck, chest, the abrasions to his hands, um, I asked him how he got those markings. And what did he say? He said that he works with glass a lot and he gets scratched up. What was his demeanor when you were speaking to him? Uh, I would classify it as solemn. I mean, he was um, not animated in any way, just more very reserved and subdued. After you left the hospital that day, did you do any further investigation on this case? Yes. And what did you do? Uh, I immediately went to the area of the, vil the, area of the village of West Salem uh, to try to look for any possible video evidence. Video evidence of what? Uh, Sergeant Yaley had advised me that his uh, initial conversation was that we were looking for possibly a, uh, a larger um, flatbed type truck. Um, originally I didn't know what color and then later was informed kind of a dark bluish dark colored vehicle. And where did you get the description from of the vehicle you were looking for? Sergeant Yaley. Okay. Did he tell you where he got that? Uh, I'm assuming for Mr. Ken Hammer. And so when you got back to West Salem, what did you do to look for surveillance video? I first went to the Union State Bank. <laughs> okay. And what did you find there? Well, I spoke with Tracy Von Ruden, uh, one of the managers there, and asked her if she had any uh, surveillance video that would depict the area of Highway 16 in County Highway M, and she said that they did Here's have a video. Spain. Were you able to see any video that day from Union State Bank? Yes, she showed me the video. And where is Union State Bank located? The Union State Bank is located on the southwest corner of Highway 16 and County Highway M. And what times did you review the video? 
I reviewed the video a half hour prior to the reported incident and a half hour after the reported incident. I'm now going to play a portion of that video in what's previously been marked as Exhibit 77. Is that correct? That's been um, agreed to? It's fine, yes. I have you received and you may publish uh, 77. We're starting the video at about 7.57 a.m. Can you please explain what we're watching here? This is the video from uh, one of the cameras at the Union State Bank. Um, on the top of the screen and center of the screen uh, depicts County Highway M. And going from left to right on the screen, that depicts Highway 16. Um, and just on the upper right-hand corner going away would be the uh, south of Highway 16 on County Highway M. Just for familiarity, can you give us some landmarks that are around there to help orient people further? Sure. The uh, uh, Union State Bank is at the corner, and just as you go towards on Alaska, uh, that would be Feature Sports Bar and Grill is going to be just to the um, west of the bank. Uh, as you see across um, at the top of the screen, that's Brennigan Chevrolet. And then if you went to the far right, Quick Trip would be, and, and Keenan's Cherryland would be on the uh, right-hand side of County Highway M there. And why did you choose this location? Well, this is a very popular uh, area in the morning uh, for travelers to commute or to go from uh, any job site or business. Uh, it's a major intersection. It's a four-lane highway. <laughs> How does this intersection relate to the reported incident location? If the motor vehicle had been traveling south on County Highway M, uh, this would be the next major intersection that it would come into contact with. And about how many times did you watch this video? Numerous times. And in watching the video numerous times, did you ever see any vehicles matching the description given to you um, for the suspect vehicle? No, I did not. Were there any other videos at Union State Bank that you reviewed? Yes, I wanted to see if they had any other angles, and I later found that they did. Um, I observed that you could see on the, uh, directly to the east for all vehicles going south and north on M, south of Highway 16. And in viewing that video, did you see any vehicles that matched the suspect vehicle? No, I did not. Stopping the video at Mr. Gookie is holding up what's previously been marked as Exhibit 3. Um, can you tell us what this map is showing us, what's depicting? That appears to be uh, a large printout of a Google map um, showing the Highway 16 and area north, including the village of West Salem. Okay. Um, we'll refer back to the map in just a second, but can you tell me um, any other locations that you reviewed surveillance at? Yes. Uh, 
I reviewed video from Quick Trip, and I also reviewed video from the West Salem First Responder Building. Okay. And where are those on the map? Thank you. And can I ask you to refresh our memory as to the incident location? Do you see that marked on the map? The incident location is not marked on this map, but it would be further up here on County Highway M off of this map. And how about Union State Bank? The Union State Bank is located right here. Thank you. Going back to the Union State Bank video, how did you know, you said you looked at it a half hour before and a half hour after the reported incident time. How did you know that the video you were looking at, that the timestamp was accurate? Well, the timestamp was not accurate. Uh, the timestamp was approximately 40 minutes fast, uh, almost to the second. And I was able to confirm and make the timestamp accurate by looking at the West Salem, I can see the West Salem patrol vehicle go through the intersection, as well as correlating that with his video and the audible time, so I could see that it was 40 minutes. Okay. You said you also looked at video at Quick Trip. Yes. Why did you choose that video, that location? Well, Quick Trip is a very popular spot in the morning. A lot of people going to work or coming uh, home from work will stop there for incidentals, uh, fuel, coffee, donuts, whatever it may be. Uh, Quick Trip, I know from prior investigations, has excellent video and encompasses many different angles. So to me, it seemed reasonable and due diligence to look at other angles. What date did you go to look at that video? That would have been on the 19th of September. And what video times did you look at for the Quick Trip video? It was 8 a.m. till 8.30 a.m. Did you get a copy of that surveillance video for your records? Yes. And when you looked at it, uh, what did you see? I did not see any vehicles matching the description. Were you able to see the street? There's a section on the video that's an overview of the gas pumps. Uh, there's numerous cameras there, and by selecting on the overview of the gas pumps, I could also see traffic uh, on Highway 16, more in front of Brennigan Chevrolet there. And again, how did you verify the time stamp on the Quick Trip video? That one I was able to keep track of it with my watch, that it was accurate. And it was ac ac their, their recording system showed an accurate time? Yes. You also mentioned the first responder building. When did you retrieve that video? I did not retrieve that video. I watched that video on uh, September 20th of the incident year. Why didn't you retrieve it? The West Salem first responder building, they had the video on a DVR, uh, but they were unable to transfer, or transfer that video to any other digital media, either a DVD or a flash drive or anything, so I, I could not get a hold of that. And where is the first responder building located? The first responder building is located on Brickell Road, just east of West Avenue North. And why did you choose that location? I chose that location because there's only a couple different roads that a vehicle could turn off of coming south from the incident location. Uh, and, and Brickell Road was one of those uh, roads. And what times did you look at that video footage from? I looked at that video footage for a half hour prior to the incident and a half hour after. And again, how did you verify whether that time stamp was accurate or not? I was able to use my watch and see that it was accurate, <laughs> verifying it from the live feed. And when you watched that video, did you see any vehicles matching the description of the truck given to you in this incident? No, I did not. Are you aware of any other roads between the incident location and the intersection by Union State Bank that 
uh, the vehicle could have possibly turned off on? Yes. And did you look for videos in those locations? Yes, I drove around uh, for quite some time, several different days, uh, trying to locate maybe home video um, or other business video that could show um, the, the, the suspect vehicle. However, um, I could not locate anything else. Okay. Were you able to find any other places that had video systems that whether they are working or not? Yes, I did speak with uh, representatives from Brennig and Chevrolet, uh, figuring that they would have good video of both County Highway M as well as Highway 16, and their DVR system was broken, so I could not see anything. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Bernard. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of go backwards in your testimony here, officer. Let's start with these videos first. I mean, as long as we have the map there, I don't, I don't know if it's necessary to raise it up. There's a laser pointer here to make this work. So can see, there's a dot up there on the top of the map. I think the jury can see that. Um, what does that dot on the top of the map uh, mark? Uh, that's marked as Wild Winds Horse Ranch. Sure, and um, are you aware of the fact that there was, albeit grainy, but, but some surveillance video obtained from Wildman's horse ranch? Yes, I understand Captain Zimmerman had found that. Okay, and you would agree then that um, the video of that Wildwind's horse ranch um, would be better capable of potentially capturing southbound vehicles that went by the Burgum Cooley Road Highway M intersection, then would the video from, say, Quick Trip or uh, the bank that you referenced before? I haven't seen that video, sir. It's, it's nearer to the, the location of the accident, is it not? It's closer to the location of the accident than the intersection of Highway 16 and M. Sure, and there are quite a, a number of uh, residences between the Wild Winds Horse Ranch and, and where the Quick Trip store is? Yeah, there are residences. Sure. Absolutely. There's driveways. Yes. And there's also this other road. Let me walk up here. Is this Asmus Road, the, the one that turns, I guess it'd go to the east here? Sorry, I might have been blocked. Is this, this is Asmus Road here? Yes, that is Asmus Road. Okay. And I mean, that's a fairly well-traveled road as well, isn't it? It does receive traffic, yes. It, it seems, from my perspective, to be somewhat of a cutoff between Highway M and, and points to the east. I mean, you can bypass West Salem by, by taking Asmus Road. Correct. And, and you would also then agree that any video that you isolated from, from locations south of there would not have... Uh, been able to determine if a, uh, a flatbed truck had turned onto Asmus Road. That is correct. I would not. Right. Um, you also, I think, told the jury a moment ago that you, you looked at between 8 and 8.30 a.m. on all these videos? No. Uh, enlighten me. The uh, Quick Trip video I looked from 8 a.m. to 8.30. The Union mm -hmm. State Bank I looked from one half hour prior to the incident and one half hour after the incident. That would be the same for the West Salem First Responder Building, one half hour prior and one half hour after. Okay, so if, if a suspect vehicle would have stopped anywhere along Highway M at a residence or at another business there for any period of time that exceeded a half an hour, you also would not have seen it on any of the videos? No, I would not have. The, uh, and I don't need to take the time right now to watch all these videos. I think we've seen enough videos for one day. But I, I presume you would agree with the statement that there were a, probably a fair number of dark colored trucks that would go through these various uh, videos throughout that morning. 
there were pickup trucks, but I did not see any with a flatbed or with stake pockets and sides. I understand, but I just asked about dark colored trucks. I mean, I imagine there was a fair number of dark colored trucks. I'm quite certain there was dark colored trucks on the video. You told the jury prior to talking about these videos that you followed the ambulance um, that Barbara Kenthammer was in to, uh, was it Gunderson Hospital? Gunderson Lutheran Medical Center, yes. Okay, and do you, do you know approximately how long you were at the hospital before Todd Kenhammer arrived? I do not know. Is it possible for you to estimate? There was a lot going on and I was back there where she was receiving medical treatment and I was focused on my job. I really don't know how long it was, sir. It was a considerable amount of time, was it not? I mean, you were in back trying to take pictures of Barbara, trying to get her to communicate. I mean, there was things that you were doing that took time. I guess Sergeant Yaley would know that more because I was out in the waiting room uh, at that time when I knew it was fruitless to try to, one, communicate with Barbara Ken Hammer. I knew that I could not take pictures. Um, when Sergeant Yaley arrived, I was out there and met with Sergeant Yaley and Mr. Ken Hammer at that time. All right, and it's at that point that you spoke with Todd Ken Hammer. Yes. Um, and you spoke with him about, well, about taking some pictures of him. You asked him, can I take some pictures, I presume? Yes, I asked him. And, and he was agreeable to that? He yes. held his hands out? Yes, he did. Put him on the table? Yes, he did. Lifted his shirt? Yes, he did. Um, did he appear to be distraught? My impression was that he was s subdued. He was just very reserved. Um, he wasn't crying. Uh, or anything like that at all when I spoke with him. You asked him about what I think you described as scratches on his neck. Yes. Um, and, and we looked at a picture, we don't need to look again, but we looked at a picture of those scratches that are kind of on the upper locations on both sides of his neck. Yes. And you asked him how, I think you asked him how he got those scratches. I asked him how he got the scratches and injuries on his body. Did you ask him specifically about the scratches on his neck? I did not specifically ask about each injury on his body. Okay, so he just sort of gave you a blanket statement, I work with glass and sometimes I get scratched? Yes. Um, did he also tell you that, that he spends some time in the woods and been putting up hunting stands? No, he did not tell me that. This is a not terribly long after his wife had been in a terrible accident? Not terribly long, no. Um, do you know, had uh, Todd been able to see his wife at that point? No, I'm quite certain no. I have no further questions. Stops, anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay, at this time, does any juror have a question of Deputy Amundsen? Okay, at least one. Anyone else? Okay. Give her a question for
Let's see more. Right. Uh, question 506, um, I will not ask, don't take anything from that. All right, Deputy, you may step down. Thank you. <coughs> Wish to call your next witness. Uh, Judge, we have uh, just one witness left. That might be 45 minutes. That's fine then. We'll take uh, at least a short break to about 3.30 or shortly thereafter. Don't talk about the case. Um, and we'll get a break. All right, we'll go back on the record outside the presence of the jury. It looks like everybody that needs to be here is here. Are we ready to call the jury in? Yes. Okay, they're ready. Bring them in. They all be seated. Okay, Mr. Grinke, you ready to call your next witness? Yes, uh, state would recall Captain Zimmerman. Under penalties of perjury, do you solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that the testimony you want to give in this matter shall be the truth and all truth in the matter? I do. Captain Zimmerman, um, we last were talking to you about surveillance videos. Um, at some point in the investigation, uh, after looking at surveillance videos, did the Sheriff's Department ask the public for assistance? Yes, we did. How did you do that? A press release was sent out to all the media, and also <laughs> the same press release was posted on our Facebook page. stipulated that Exhibit 45 can be admitted and published. Is that correct? That's correct. <coughs> exhibit 45 will be then received and you may publish it. Oh, you know what? Uh, can you darken that again? I'm sorry. You exhibit 45. Um, can you read the portion of the press release that indicates what the Sheriff's Department was asking for? The third paragraph in the press release states that the Sheriff's Department is asking for the public's assistance on this case. If you were driving on County M near Bergham Cooley around the time of the accident and observed anything suspicious, please contact, and it had my name and office phone number on it. What was the purpose of sending that out? To get the public's assistance um, in seeing anything, seeing if anybody's seen anything suspicious at the time, um, I will note that on the upper portion of the press release is the date and time the accident occurred. And we like to get this out to the public to see if anybody's seen anything suspicious to, to give us a call. Um, any information received is very helpful. In the investigation, did you also um, have the Sheriff's Department perform a search warrant at the Kent Hammer residence? Yes. Um, are you aware of the property that was taken as a result of that search warrant? Somewhat, yes. Um, I'm, I'm not real familiar with everything that was taken. Specifically, do you know if a windshield was found in somewhere on the property? There was a windshield that was seized during the search warrant that was found in the detached garage at the Ken Hammer residence. In the investigation then, did you also 
try to get information from Google. Yes, I did. And specifically, is there something called Google Dashboard? Yes, there is. Can you explain what that is? Google Dashboard, if you have Google um, on your phone, um, it's, a, it's a function through Google that periodically records GPS locations of your phone um, and it's, it, it's periodic records that, that are obtained. Do you send a subpoena to Google? I did, yes. And what information comes back when you do that Google Dashboard subpoena? Information comes back is that uh, they give you the time that this recording has been received by Google, and then it gives GPS coordinates of that location. Did you do that for both Todd and Barbara Kane Hammer's phones? Yes, I did. And did you request information for September 15th, Thursday, and September 16th, Friday? Yes, I did. Um, regarding September 15th, uh, were you able to uh, get information back on September 15th? The raw data that we got back from the Google dashboard for September 15th was very minimum. Um, there was there was not a lot of information received from Google on the 15th of September. And uh, there's no explanation for why. There's no um, mystery to that or negative information towards either side. Just Google didn't provide a lot of information. That's correct. Regarding the 16th, did you have that information plotted onto a map of the West Salem area? Yes, we did. Your Honor, we've uh, stipulated that exhibits 46 and 47 can be admitted. Yeah, show that the jury. All right, uh, 46, 47 will be admitted, and you said to publish as well? Yes. It'll be published. Um, can you please explain what this Exhibit 46 is showing? This is a map that was completed um, showing the, the Google, Jas excuse me, Google Dashboard results um, on Todd Kenhammer's phone for September 16th. And just to be clear, the blue dots are not indicating any kind of activity or call or text. It's just a sing signal that Google gets. Correct. That's the, that's the recorded signal that they had received at that time. And there's a cluster of blue dots kind of right in the middle, uh, just above the center of the screen. Do you know where that, what that location is? That would be the Ken Hammer residence. And it indicated that Todd's phone was there in the early morning hours? Correct. There's, behind every time, there is a number in parentheses. Do you know what that number represents? The number in parentheses is the, is the margin of error in meters. Uh, the, the smaller the number, the more accurate that the, the um, distance is to where the GPS reading is. Towards the upper right corner of that screen, there's another cluster of blue dots, three of them. Do you know what that residence is? <laughs> It would be the Barbara Thompson residence, which is further in on East Scotch Cooley Road than the Ken Hammer residence. In the very top right corner box, uh, there are some times indicated. Could you read those times? The times are 7.48 and 47 seconds and 7.49 and 3 seconds. Um, and then at the farthest bottom uh, center of the screen, there's uh, another dot. What is the time on that? 7.50 and 36 seconds. Would the conclusion be that the phone is traveling in that direction from the upper right to the lower left of the screen? Yes, it is. And what is the road that that blue dot is on that's at the bottom? That is highway, State Highway 108. And the next screen, can you just indicate what road those blue dots are traveling on? This would still be State Highway 108. And the bottom time, if you could just read that. 7.53 and 24 seconds. We're not going to go through every dot. Um, this screen, there's a road that's kind of in the bottom uh, center of the screen. What, what's the label on that road that the blue dots are on? That would be Asmus Road, which runs from State Highway 108 over to County Road M. I'm sorry to interrupt. May we state for the record which Oh, this is all still Exhibit 46. Okay. Um, right in the center, there's a blue dot kind of by itself. What's the time on that? 7.57 and 20 seconds. And uh, what road is that near? That road is near Lehman Road, which intersects with County Road M. 
And do you, are you familiar with that intersection and what's there? I am. Uh, Wild Winds Ranch is located just south of that location. And you testified previously about your experience with Wild Winds Ranch in the surveillance video? Yes, I did. Um, do you remember the time uh, that the Wild Winds Ranch showed something that looked like a Kent Hammer vehicle passing by it? The vehicle that we observed heading northbound on County Road M traveled through the, the small pane, which you might say from the surveillance video. Phone, uh, the red dots follow the same path as the blue dots? Yes, it does. Okay. I'm not going through all the slides. Um, I'm going to go to the fourth page of Exhibit 47. Um, and again, the kind of in the center of the screen, um, there's one dot. What time is that? That would be 936 and 53 seconds. And that would have been uh, perhaps when the vehicle was being towed with this kind of phone inside? That would have been, yes, correct. Much earlier times um, are listed on Bergen Cooley Road. What's the first dot that you see that's going up Bergen Cooley Road? The first dot would be 8 o'clock and 2 seconds. Okay. And then is there a large cluster of dots above that? Yes, there is. I'm going to show the jury uh, exhibit number two. Zimmerman, um, the parties have agreed and stipulated Exhibit 2 can be received and published. Is that can you correct? Yes. All right, be received, you may publish. Can you explain what this map shows? This is an overall map of the area, including uh, East Scotch Cooley Road and does include the Burgum Cooley Road also. Uh, does it indicate where the Thompson residence and the Kenhammer residences are? It does, yes. Where are those on the map? It, the Ken Hammer residence would be on the upper portion of the map on the left-hand side. The Thompson residence is going to be on the upper portion of the map, right-hand side. And at the very bottom of the map, there's another location that I don't think we've talked about yet. What is that? That would be the location of the West Salem Middle School. Mr. Craig, you may need to raise the map for the jury. Okay. Bring it to your left more so it's not glared by the light. Everyone can see that? Right, just put it down. Thank you. During the investigation, were you um, able to retrieve cell phone records? Yes, we were. And specifically, oh, I'm sorry, can you just take the map down and set it down? Yeah. <clears throat> um, did you review Barbara's cell, Barbara Canhammer's cell phone records? Yes, I did. And did you prepare a chart of her cell phone records in the month of September of 2016? I did, yes. Are the parties have agreed that Exhibit 48 can be admitted and shown to the jury? Is that correct? Yes. Can be received and published. Uh, can you describe what Exhibit 48 shows? This slide shows uh, the calls from Barbara Kenhammer's phone made to her mother, Joyce Adams, and it gives the date and the times of each phone call. And the chart starts at September 1st and then goes to the 2nd, and then there's a gap. Do you know what the dates of September 3rd, 4th, and 5th were? That would have been Labor Day weekend. Um, the times that are indicated and the dates are indicated on the uh, chart, are there any weekdays missing from the chart other than Labor Day in September? In September? Um, September 16th is not on there. And that would have been the day of the incident? Correct. 
And what was the call duration in minutes for the calls? What was the range in time? Anywhere from five minutes and eight seconds um, up to um, 10 and a half minutes. Were you able to find any calls that Barbara Kent ever made on the 16th? No, we were not. Any text messages? No. At this point, um, the parties have stipulated that there are some crime lab reports that rather have the analysts testify, we would introduce them and have Captain Zimmerman reference them. Uh, so I'll start with exhibit number 52 and 53. Is that correct, Mr. Hurley? Yes. Right, those will be received, and I guess you can use uh, Captain Zimmerman right here. to en enter them for the jury. First, Captain Zimmerman identifying Exhibit 52, who is the, who is the um, analyst on that report? Laura Matson. And what is the date at the top of that report? January 18th of 2017. And uh, was this a report regarding uh, fingerprint analysis? It is, yes. What was the item being submitted for analysis? The rear view mirror of the Ken Hammer vehicle. And can you just read the sentence that's the conclusion of Laura Matson on that analysis? Stated on the report, the examination of the above listed item revealed no friction ridge detail that was suitable for comparison. Do you know what friction ridge detail means? That is, I just know from reading prior reports that it, it pertains to fingerprints itself with the, with the um, ridge pattern of a, of a fingerprint. There might be a pattern, but it's not enough to identify? That's correct. Then exhibit 53, if you can identify the date of that report. April 11th of 2017. And who is the analyst? Again, Laura Matson. And what was the item submitted for analysis? It's described on the report as a steel pipe. And if you can again read her conclusion on that analysis. The examination on the above listed item revealed no friction ridge detail suitable for comparison. And Your Honor, we've also agreed and stipulated that a crime lab report of Ray Lenz can be admitted in Exhibit 49. That's correct. Right, that will be uh, received. And again, you're using Captain Zimmerman. Captain Zimmerman reference Exhibit 49. Um, what is the date of that report? January 9th of 2017. And who is the analyst? Raymond Lenz. And directing your attention to item B28, how is that identified? The second item on the list. Could you repeat that number, please? D28. On the report, item D28 is listed as one sealed brown paper bag containing a 1.5 liter. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> item D28 is identified as one sealed brown paper bag containing a 1.5 liter gray, silver, and blue commuter mug. And item D29, how is that described? Item D29 is labeled as one sealed brown paper bag containing a sealed white slide pillbox containing a small piece of broken blue plastic. And item D30. Item D30 is labeled as one sealed brown paper bag containing a sealed white slide pillbox containing a small piece of broken blue plastic. And turning to the second page, uh, if you look at the seventh 
full paragraph that begins with the word words based on. If you can just read that conclusion. The paragraph states, based on the above observations, it is the opinion of this analyst that the items D29 and D30 originated from item D28 to the exclusion of any other sources. Is that the uh, Bubba cup and broken pieces that we've been talking about in this trial? Yes, it is. Did you, uh, did the Sheriff's Department take the travel mug we've been talking about and talking about into evidence? It was taken in evidence at the state crime laboratory when it was removed from the vehicle. And then returned to the Sheriff's Department? Yes. At this point, Your Honor, we've agreed that exhibits 50 and 51 can be admitted and published to the jury. Is that correct? I think they'll be both admitted, 50, 51, and both may be published. Uh, Captain Zimmerman, this picture on the screen is Exhibit 50. Can you describe what it shows? That was the um, Bubba mug that was removed from the Ken Hammer vehicle at the State Crime Laboratory and is labeled as uh, item D28 on the report. And can you explain what Exhibit 51 is now being shown to the jury? Those are the two pieces on the lower portion of the, the photograph there um, that were recovered from the interior of the vehicle. And you have the actual mug uh, with you today to enter into evidence? I do, yes. I'd like to introduce the actual mug, which would be exhibit number 57. Any objection? Any uh, objection? I'm, I'm sorry. I was distracted. Any objection? Oh, no, not at all. No objection. <coughs> Any objection to being published if they were? Not wish? at all, Your Honor. Right, be received and can be published. the mug now in front of you identified as Exhibit 57, the mug that was found at the state crime lab inside the Kent Hammer car? Yes, it is. Okay. So those are all the questions I have, Your Honor. <clears throat> I guess I have one question before. Where's the two little pieces? Are they separate? They're separate. Okay. Yes. Are they part of this exhibit? No, Your Honor. That's fine. Just want to make it clear. Mr. Hurley? to be complete. Can you pull out the two pieces, please? Sure. Each one's big separately.
the exhibits 208 and 218. Are, are these the shards from the lip of the bubble mug? Yes, they are. I, I would move them in evidence. No objection. Yeah, which is that 208 and 218? And 218. Uh, to be clear, do we know which one is which? From D29 and D30? I'll just look at the photos. I know which is which where it was found in the vehicle, but I do not know which is which labeled on the... Well, the one labeled 208 looks like D30 by my view of the label, but I'm quite a ways away. Right in front of D30, correct. And then 218 would be D29. D29. All right. Any objection? No. Be received. I want to direct your attention for a moment to September 27th. When, whenever you're ready, Captain. Sure, go ahead. I, I know I. Uh, I can do this. No. Go ahead. No, whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't want to. Cool. I want to direct your attention to September 27th. On that day, did you, along with uh, Mr. Yaley, Investigator Leinfelder, and Deputy Buckmaster, conduct a grid search of the swamp area where the Ken Hammer vehicle was located? Yes, we did. And can you explain to the jury how that was conducted? We used, um, like a grid pattern is what we did. Um, we had many hundred yards of twine that we staked out the swamp area off Burgum Cooley to the east or south, you might want to say, in the swampy area. And it was interval, intervals of every 10 feet, I believe, that we staked off. And that area was searched by the officers on scene and also with metal detectors. And how long did that take? Several hours. And At the conclusion, uh, what did you find? Nothing of, of evidentiary value we, we found out there. You talked about a press release that was admitted into evidence, correct? Yes, sir. And, and when a press release is issued, how, how is that done? At the Sheriff's Department on our, our uh, fax machine, you might want to say, which is kind of primitive. I'm not sure if it utilizes the fax numbers now or an email address, but this is sent out to all the local media um, in, the, in the La Crosse area. And can you tell me again what it said? Just that one paragraph I read. Yes, please. The Sheriff's Department is asking for the public's assistance on this case. If you were driving on County M near Burgum Cooley around the time of the accident and observed anything suspicious, please contact. And then my, my name and number was listed. And that was additionally posted on Facebook, was it not? Yes, it was. And when it was posted on Facebook in the context of seeing something suspicious, it shows a picture of the Ken Hammer vehicle, is that correct? I believe so, yes, sir. Nothing in the press release that was sent out by fax or on Facebook ever mentioned a flatbed truck, is that correct? No, it did not. On September 30, did you, along with Deputy Buckmaster, conduct a traffic count in the area of County Road M and Burgum Cooley? Yes, we did. And how was that accomplished? We just parked on, on Burgum Cooley near County Road M, and I believe every 15 minutes we kept track of northbound and southbound cars in that 15-minute period. 
which traveled up and down north and south on County M. I believe also we recorded vehicles coming out of Burgum Cooley too. So this would have been 15, 14 days, two weeks after the occurrence, correct? That's correct. And between 7.30 and 7.45 a.m., did you note 52 vehicles going by? I would have to refer to my report, sir. I'm, have you got it here? I do not, no. I tell you what, while she's doing that, I will ask you some other questions. reached a, a stipulation that, uh, because this may save some time, that between 7.30 and 7.45 a.m., 52 vehicles went by. Between 7.45 and 8 a.m., 37 vehicles went by. And between 8 a.m. and 8.15 a.m., 29 vehicles went by. Just to be clear, is that north and south, total vehicles? I don't know. I am not sure how I... I just recorded that in my report, Your Honor. All right, then I'll just go with your stipulation the way it is. It's both north and south, Your Honor. All right, that's agreeable, Mr. Grinke? Yes. North and south, those numbers. Okay. Your Honor, I believe the state and the defense have reached an agreement that exhibits 2009 through, oh, I should better, 2009 2000? to 10, 209, 209, okay, 210, it's been a long week, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215, 216, and 217 may be received. Is that correct, Mr. Grinke? Yes. And you have no objection to those being published? Correct. All right, those uh, exhibits 209 through 217 will be received and may be published. Madam Clerk, might you turn on the Samsung device? Yes, it is. Now, I, I understand that you believe uh, a, a filter was used on the camera at this time that makes things appear darker than they actually were. Is that correct? That's correct. But this does show the lights on the vehicle, correct? That's correct. is another photograph of the Ken Hammer vehicle at the scene, is that correct? Yes, it is. Now, there's, besides the angle, there's a difference between this one and the previous one. In exhibit 209, we see uh, the West Salem Fire Department uniform of one of the firefighters, correct? That's correct. And to his right, on top of the hood, we see items from either the fire department or the first responders. Is that correct? Yes, that appears to be correct. And at that time then, Mrs. Ken Hammer was still present at the scene. Is that correct? 
I would be speculating, but I believe so, yes. In Exhibit 210, we see those items have been removed and Mrs. Ken Hammer is no longer present at the scene, correct? That's correct. In Exhibit 211, we see the <coughs> fire department personnel and first responders working on Mrs. Ken Hammer, correct? Correct. And there on, on the hood of the automobile, we see those items that we had seen in Exhibit 209, is that, am I accurate? The same items, I, it appears to be the same items, I'm not sure if they are, but yes. I'm gonna show you 200, Exhibit 214. You recognize this as a photograph of the windshield of the Ken Hammer vehicle taken at the scene that morning? Yes, I do. And in, in the center of the photograph, we see the puncture into the windshield, correct? Correct. And above that puncture, uh, we see the bulge. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm gonna show you some close-ups of that windshield. Is this another photograph that depicts both the puncture to the left and the bulge to the right. Which is exhibit what? Thank you, Your Honor. It's exhibit 213. I'm sorry, could you repeat what you were asking me? I want to orient it correctly. Here do we see on the left the puncture and to the right of it the bulge? I believe so, yes. Show me again exhibit 214. You see the yellow piece of veget vegetation, which I think was previously identified in this case? Yes. And lying on top of that yellow piece of vegetation appears to be a shard of glass, correct? It appears to be so, yes. And there are several shards of glass that appear to be on the surface of the windshield in the vicinity of the puncture, is that correct? That's correct. Show you exhibit 212. These are photographs taken from a different angle of the uh, two intrusions into the glass, correct? Correct. Let's see if I can. Here we see an intrusion that is more to the left of the screen and another to the right of the screen. Am I correct? You're correct. And the one on the left appears to have red on it. Is that correct? Correct. Would that be the puncture mark? I believe so, yes. And to the right of that would be the bulge? Correct. Show me now. 215. This is another photograph of the windshield that was taken at the scene that day. Is that correct? That's correct. Now exhibit 216. Does this depict uh, the puncture to the windshield more to the left, the bulge more to the right, and shards of glass on the windshield. Yes, it does. And from this angle, we can see that many of those shards of glass 
are red in color, is that correct? That's correct. I'm gonna show you exhibit 217, which is that same photograph blown up. And here can we see more distinctly the red shards of glass on the surface of the windshield? Yes. This is 47? Yes. Here we have one of the Google Maps from exist, Exhibit 47, which would be from the cell phone of Barbara Kennedy. And in the brown colored legend, at the very bottom, there's a, an X in a parenthesis. You see that? Yes. You know what that means or Ac represents? Accuracy in meters. And when we look at the times that have been printed out, we see next to those times a parenthesis with numbers in them. That's correct. And do those parentheses with numbers in them represent the accuracy in meters? Yes, it does. And that's true with respect to all of those Google Maps which we just saw, correct? That's correct. I want to direct your attention back to the crime lab report of Raymond Lenz. And I apologize, I forgot to write down the number on that. What number was that, sir? 49. 49. Thank you. This contains an analysis of quite a few items, correct? That's correct. Um, item E in this analysis was a sealed brown paper bag containing the right half of a black hooded sweatshirt wrapped in white paper. Is that correct? That's correct. And item F is identified as a sealed brown paper bag containing the right half of a black v-neck t-shirt with orange stripes. Is that correct? These are the right halves of the black hooded sweatshirt and the black v-neck t-shirt which Barbara Kenhammer was wearing at the time of the occurrence, correct? That's correct, yes. And you know the reason that there's only one half, correct? Correct. Would you, would you tell the jury? The reason being is that uh, Mrs. Kinhammer's clothing was cut off at the scene. These two items were left at the scene, the, the right half of each article, uh, clothing article. The other ones were transported to the hospital with Mrs. Kenhammer. And unfortunately, at some point during that trip to the hospital, the left halves were discarded or lost, correct? Correct. With respect to the Bubba mug and Ms. Lenz's analysis of the Bubba mug, she notes that it was examined visually and microscopically and found to be in a used and slightly soiled condition with a white residue inside. The blue lid is in a broken condition with pieces detached and missing 
and two small shards of clear possible broken glass, item D28B, as in Bravo, were recovered from the mug. Did I read that correctly? You would find it on page two of the report, the third full paragraph. Yes. <clears throat> Here she says it's clear possible broken class. Do you know whether these shards were further analyzed? I do not. And she does not state in this report where on the mug they were found. She does not, no. Right, so we don't know if it was the outside or the inside, correct? Correct. When the mug was found, but for the uh, broken, you know, I don't know the word. I don't know the word for this. What shall we call it? Lid. A sip, a sip cover, can we call it that? That, a lid. A, well, well, no, the lid would be... The lid is actually cover. larger, correct? Sip cover would be fine. Okay. But for the broken sip cover, the lid was on the mug at the time that it was retrieved from the automobile, correct? I am not sure of that. Um, that was done at the state crime laboratory. I misphrased my question. You're correct. The lid was on the mug at the time that the photographs of it were taken on the inside passenger or the inside driver's compartment at the scene, correct? It appeared to be on, yes. I have seen it before, yes. Uh, Your Honor, the defense and the prosecution have stipulated to the admission of Exhibit 219. Is that correct? Yes. Be received. Captain, could you please identify that for the jury? It's a report from the State Crime Laboratory um, from a Kenneth Olson. And in short, what does it relate? It relates to the mug itself and that um, the contents from the interior of the mug were tested. And does he indicate that at the time that it was received at the crime laboratory, there was still liquid within the Bubba mug? Yes. Okay. Madam Clerk, can I switch back over to this machine? This is a photograph of that mug, correct? That is correct. Here we have the mug itself. Here, in the photograph, we 
you see the sip hole in the open position, is that correct? That's correct. Would you mind taking this mug and putting it in the open position? When one has it in the open position, if the open position is at the bottom of the mug, as though an individual were to drink from it, on what side is the handle? Right side. Right side. In this picture, it's on the left side, correct? It is. Does that appear then that perhaps the negative was reversed? I'm not sure, sir. I didn't I didn't take the photograph, so <laughs> but here it's on the right side, correct? That's correct. Now I'm going to show you exhibit 205. This is a, the photograph of the bubble mug in the front driver compartment after the occurrence, correct? I believe that's a photograph of the mug at the state crime lab. At the state crime lab? Yes. I got the one after the occurrence. This would be the mug in the front driver's compartment at the scene, is that correct? That's correct. And can you tell from the photograph whether the sip opening is open or closed? I cannot. Do you know of any other photograph from the scene that would give us that information? I'm not sure if there was another photograph taken of the driver's side interior at a different angle. One is another driver's side photo, but it might be the car itself. 26 is the driver's seat. Exhibit 26. 
And I'm afraid this one doesn't make it any clearer for us, does it? It does not. Do you recall Correct? Correct. And you see it's a little bit darker on the right-hand side where the front of the cup is? Yes, I do. Do you recall that that was wet? I cannot recall that. Any other questions? Just one, I think. Captain Zimmerman, in the news release that was entered in evidence, you were asked questions about a mention of a flatbed truck. Uh, that was not mentioned in the news release. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Do you know why it wasn't mentioned in the news release? We, we find that when we put out press releases and stuff looking for the public's assistance, that if we leave it more open-ended, and we're apt to get more calls than if we narrow the subject down. So, so our th thought process was that if we left it open-ended, we would receive more calls, which we could review then, um, versus if we pinpointed down to a certain vehicle or, and so on. If somebody had called in indicating they saw something, a car in a ditch or something suspicious, you could then ask them if you interviewed them if they saw a flatbed truck or things of that nature? That's correct. Was it any attempt to hide that from the public? No. That's all I have. Good follow-up. Go ahead. But the press release on Facebook wasn't so open-ended, correct? I'm not sure if I understand you, sir. Well, that one included a picture of the Ken Hammer automobile in the context of asking for anything suspicious. Correct, yes. Thank you. Nothing else? Well, at this time, does any jury have a question of uh, Captain Zimmerman? At least one, two, anyone else? Okay. Seven and eight, right? Five, 507, 508. There's uh, two juror questions, 507. I guess I won't answer, but we'll publish the mug to you. Uh, give the mug to the jury, they can pass it up and down. So that exhibit was no, what number again? You know, 28? No, the mug is 50, 57. 57. 57. Okay, 57 is now published to the jury. Because for the record, the question was just the logo on both sides, so you can see for yourself. Uh, Captain, give me that in a second. Right. Again, just to be clear, the question was whether the logo was on both sides, and the jury has now seen the um, Exhibit 57. Um, question. Uh, uh, 508, another juror question. Um, I cannot ask that one, so don't take anything from that. All right. We'll conclude for today. There won't be any more testimony. It's a little late. Six minutes later than I like. When you go home tonight, don't talk about the case at all. Try not to think about it. Uh, be back here tomorrow. We'll try to start again right around 8.30, so report in somewhere around 8.15 or so, and the bailiffs will get you back up here. Uh, I think Gary's here tomorrow. Are you? Okay, we'll have a new bailiff working with Gary tomorrow I'll just look for him so have a good evening uh, they'll take uh, possession of your notes they'll be um, secured and we'll see you um, tomorrow morning
Right, again, we'll start tomorrow morning about 8.30. Mr. Greinke, what's your um, lineup like? Uh, we have um, uh, Trooper Marquardt, a crime lab uh, DNA, and crime lab um, blood spattered windshield. Those, especially the last two, will take some time, so we might go into the afternoon with those. And then that's it for you, you think? I believe so. Okay. Well, if you're not certain, I can let you rest Monday morning if you want the weekend to think about it. Well, I'll have a better idea in the morning, Your Honor. Let me know things. tomorrow. Judge, yeah. I can say that um, in the event that the state rests sometime mid-afternoon, the defense um, will line up several short witnesses for okay. tomorrow afternoon to fill the gap. Okay. Um, so we're trying to be efficient here with the time tomorrow. That would be nice, Ben, yep. if you think he can be done that soon. Then um, that would be good. The, I have one other item that I'd like to put on the record. Um, I don't know as though we need to do this today, but I want to do it ahead of time. My understanding is Mr. Kent Hammer's, I think it's justice sanction support worker or whatever they're called, is, is not in today or tomorrow. Council will need to meet with Mr. Kent Hammer um, at our uh, establishment, our place, over the weekend. Um, I want to put the court on notice now. We don't know exactly what time. It'll likely be on Sunday, but whatever technology needs to be put in place to make that make sure that happens. You know, he's on GPS and, and I understand that what I'm thinking is that um, perhaps we'll send down a note that you can just call justice support and just let them know that he's with you okay and we can certainly do that tomorrow but I just whatever it works what time you want him over so if it doesn't work exactly when you want it we'll just send them a note that over the weekend they can expect a call from council to know that he's going to be likely with them all right fair thank you thank you um, Mr. Hurley, when you walk away from the microphone, people can't hear you. I have a hard time hearing you. So just remember that. Okay? All right. See you all tomorrow morning.